You know it's this. Take a perk and talk it and see. Money swallowing like six. Did it perfect to the kid. Got a million on my head. I'm a better player than a robot. Just win. I don't want to get a million dollars. The devil that's it. And I chip it again. Hello and welcome back, fellow anime lovers, to Manga Muse. I am delighted to have you join us once again in the world of fanfiction and fantasy. This is the fourth part of What If Naruto Enters Teen Titans Verse. Special note, this fanfic is written in a masterpiece of Goddess Spartan the Kitsune on fanfiction.net. Do check and support the author too. Now smash the like, share and subscribe button for more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss such great parts. Thanks for the introduction. Now let's dive into the world. With Naruto in the hubbase. Naruto was laughing his ass off. Not one managed to get inside the base. Gizmo was in a tree five feet away from the building with his pack blown. Kid was twitching from shock on the roof, and they both activated the shock wall trap for the ventilation on the roof. Cheshire and Jinx were at the back and currently trying to hide there. Ahem. Assets. Naruto did have a nosebleed seeing Jinx showing off her purple lace bra and her black silk panties to him. Cheshire wearing green lace matching underwear and trying to cover it with the remainder of her robes. Hive was stuck inside the window, his shoulders touching super glue traps. Mammoth was currently knocked out, with knockout gas, meaning he was asleep, and Shigo was currently wobbly, having so much done to her she could resist it, but she looked up. Damn it. Naruto let his clones fall in outside and put the guns away as the simulation chamber let the simulation go, everyone on the ground, hive not stuck anymore. After they all woke up and were in better shape, they were in the living room. Naruto grinned. Sorry, but ninja do not play fair. I wanted to see if you could even get the guts to try for it. And you all passed that. Now, next time I let Gizmo do the designing and I won't mess with it. Everyone looked at him, expecting him to lie. Naruto grinned. I swear on my honor as a ninja, as well as the fact you're friends, I know you can't get better if I hold you back with traps all the time. They were all still glaring a bit, but Cheshire and Jinx let it go, Jinx grabbing onto him. You better hold that promise. Cheshire sighing. I know the honor of ninjutsu, so I can forgive you if you keep your word. Unauthorized identification. Cannot permit entry. Everyone looked at the door and Gizmo was first to speak up. Computer, show guests. The computer monitor on the wall showed the front door, and everyone gaped. Catwoman and Mr. Freeze were at the door. Cheshire chuckled nervously. I kind of told Catwoman where the base was if she wanted to rest and jump. Mammoth, Gizmo and Hive all drooled at Catwoman who was still wearing her tight cat costume. She goes smacking them all. Have some pride as men, least Naruto isn't like this. Naruto sighed, but smiled as he went over to the door. Kitsunex, authorizing guests one and two entry to the base. The door opened and the two entered. Catwoman meowing as she stepped in. Hello kittens, how is everyone doing? Freeze looked at them and hummed. A bunch of young villains? We were invited here, I guess I should thank you. Naruto smiled, waving his hand. Don't mention it, and we are thieves, not villains. And sorry for the beating I gave you at the museum. I was trying to find my friend. Freeze looked surprised. It was you? How did the bat recruit you? Naruto shook his head. I went along with them to find my friend Cheshire, though I did beat Batman before getting to fight you. Cheshire chuckled and went up, shaking Catwoman's hand. Welcome. Sorry, we were kind of training a bit. Shigo hummed in thought. Am I the only one who is slightly wondering if this is a bad idea? Jinx nodded. Me too. But believe in Naruto. If anything goes wrong, hey, he beat them before he can do it again. Shigo sighed, smiling. Fine, I guess you got a point. All right, meet and greet then. With the Kanoha flunkies, Neji yawned as he came back from his nightly patrol. Sorry, once more nothing on the blonde knucklehead. He stopped as he seen that everyone was gathered around, and with them were four people. And who is our company? Kakashi smiled nervously. Some villains from this world, looking for their comrade who is here in the city who called them for a little fun. A girl with blue skin and a blue dress smiled. Hey, everyone chilling. The name's Killer Frost. 
These here are my cold shoulder partners in crime, Icicle SR, and his GR, as well as Captain Cold. In order of her introduction, she pointed them out, a big man wearing a blue suit and had a small gun. His GR was like he was made of ice himself, but was wearing street clothes, and Captain Cold was dressed as a damn Eskimo with a slightly large handgun. Neji blinked a few times. And this is to keep us under the radar from the JLA, right? Killer Frost frowned at that. Listen, we just need to be housed until we make contact with our partner Mr. Freeze, and then we'll be out of your hair. Though, the cold may not be, seeing as we got plans for the day. She suddenly grinned and froze the kitchen. That's gonna be the city when we're done with it. I suppose you should move out. Kakashi gulped. Naruto, I sure hope you haven't made any new friends like this in the time you've been here. Neji's eye was twitching. Right. So, why are all of you here when you want to be with your comrade? Killer Frost huffed. Because we don't know where he went. He said he was going to some place called the Hive and to look for a guy named Kitsunex. Sasuke and Sakura bolted upright at that. Sasuke growled. You're looking for him too? Sakura scoffed. You have no idea who you're dealing with, you won't last five minutes. Only Sasuke can stand up to Kitsunex and I doubt he will be likely to fight anyone near him. Why are you looking for Naruto anyway? Kakashi waved his hand in front of him. Sorry, they're a little pissed. Anyway, yes Kitsunex is the mask identity of a thief who used to be with us, and we are here trying to find him and return him home. Sorry to say we don't even know where he is. Icicle SR hummed. So, why would we even need to fight him if he and Freeze are together? Won't we be with him, not against him? Killer Frost sighed. Shush. Listen, Freeze was beaten and caught by Kitsunex. He told me to watch out for him. So, this thief. Naruto, was it? You want to catch him? Sorry, get in line. Hinata was coming in, waking up from her nap, and happened to hear that. She glared hotly at Killer Frost. Beat it bitch, Naruto is mine to catch. If you know what's good for you, you'll just leave Naruto alone. Killer Frost glared, scowling at Hinata. What did you call me, you blind whore, bad, idea, really? Neji slapped his face, Kakashi covered both his eyes, Ino turned pale, and Sasuke turned away, huffing. Hinata roared. Who you calling a whore? If anyone is a whore, it's those two effing blonde beaches who broke his heart as that whore beach flower who should wither and die for her treatment of Naruto. You will not get near Naruto unless it is to help me catch him or I swear this is gonna be your face. Hinata put a hand up against the ice-covered kitchen and suddenly the whole thing exploded in ice shards and vaporized instantly to nothing. Killer Frost was shocked, the icicles shaking, and the good Captain Cold was shrinking in his boots. Hanada huffed, grabbing Killer Frost by the collar. If you have any information on Naruto, you give it here, you tell me or I make sure you are not still alive by the day's end. Kakashi grabbed Hanada's hand and shook his head. She huffed, pushing Killer Frost into her comrades and walked off. Kakashi turned to them. Be glad I'm in charge of this unit here. Hanada's hella strong and would have no qualms against killing you if it meant being with the man she loves. Now, let's go over this peacefully. Icicle SR stepped up. Sure, I don't mind. So, do you face off against this town's titans? Neji shook his head. No, we've kept a low profile being good people so we can go undeterred in our search for Naruto. Kakashi nodded at that. True, see, fighting the titans would push the proverbial escalation into order thus bringing the JLA on our backs and we don't want them to just lock us up and stop us from bringing Naruto back home. So, we let everyone go about their lives, and whilst we make sure we survive long enough to search we work and get money, and when we find Naruto we'll leave. Killer Frost nodded at that. Fine, though we don't know who the Titans are, so we thought you would. Lee came up, saluting. I know one, he visited my dojo once, I think he was named like a bird, started with an R. Icicle SR, huffed. Robin, that boy wonder is with them. Lee saluted more. Yosh, Robin was his name, yes, I remember it. Neji shrugged. There's a girl named Raven who is dark and emotionless. Usually stops by the bookshop I work at. 
I hear stories from time to time, and all I know are names, Beast Boy, Starfire, and Cyborg are in the team as well, whoever they are. Truthfully, the Konoha group didn't know or see any of the Titans except for Lee seeing Robin once and Neji knowing Raven at the bookstore every so often. Other than that, they don't know much because they are only here for Naruto. Why gather that information when they would play it low-key anyway? Killer Frost nodded. Well, I guess we'll have to wait it out. Knowing Freeze, unless he is conserving his energy, he'll be desperate for diamonds soon. Kakashi got curious. Why do you say that? You don't need diamonds too, do you? Icicle SR, sighed. Not really. See, Killer Frost and my son here are able to manipulate the cold and generate ice on their own. Me, Captain Cold and Mr. P Freeze all need weapons that can generate freeze rays. But Captain Cold is dressed to protect himself from the cold. I myself have this suit cause my own ray happens to be more powerful and sometimes I need to protect myself from my own weapon. But Mr. P Freeze suit is to support his life. Captain Cold nodded to that. True, he had an accident and can't survive temperatures of 21 and over. His suit is armored but also powers a cryogenic generator to keep him cold so he doesn't die in normal weather. The power source is diamonds that are cut by the laser system he has to use an efficient amount of power to keep him alive and power his freeze ray. Neji hummed in interest. Sounds intricate enough. But why would he need diamonds? Killer Frost scoffed. We told you he was caught by Kitsunex before he escaped, and most likely Gotham PD took his power source so he can't survive for more than 48 hours if he doesn't use his freeze ray. Though he did use it to quickly put some cops under to get away and used it to make a path across the river. So, if I had to guess, he has, right now, 18 hours. With Naruto. Naruto hummed as he rummaged through the cabinets, looking for breakfast. Hell, he was up for nearly 36 hours, he needed some energy. He found some chocolate peanut butter ball power cereal and grinned. A nice treat for energy. He got a bowl and poured the cereal in before going to the fridge and looking around. Then growled. Who the hell drank all the milk? He turned to Hive and Gizmo looking in the restroom and Mammoth sleeping on the couch and he knew Kid was off to see what was going on in town. Shigo was off training in the training hall, and Mr. Freeze was currently looking at some specs of something on the laptop they left on the computer, and he didn't rightfully care much for it. Jinx was currently in the bathing room, which consisted of five showers in a big room for talking and playing around as well as toilet sinks and the works with Catwoman and Cheshire. Catwoman giggled before coming up behind Jinx and reaching in front of the girl and grabbing the poor girl's breasts. So proud of these you think washing them any extra will help them grow girly? Jinx blushed and stifled a scream with a growl as she bit her lip and turned, tackling Catwoman to the floor. Don't be so high and mighty, I am still just a teenager, I'm still filling out so don't give me crap. What, think your womanly charms can seduce any man? I bet you can't even seduce Naruto. Cheshire just minded her own business, and after a little bit looked at her own growing chest. Maybe he would be impressed with bigger breasts. Jinx gawked. Cheshire, you can't be serious. Naruto obviously doesn't care about breast sizes if his ex can pass off as my twin. Her chest is so flat, hell I think I have bigger knockers than her, and he loved her for a while. Catwoman grinned. Ryo, got some claws of your own, wanna get them sunk in the fox of your dreams. Jinx blushed red and blinked, stuttering from embarrassment before huffing and getting up, washing up. Whatever. Just wash up and have your fun with the rest of the team. Catwoman giggled and went to Cheshire. She always so uptight about Naruto? Cheshire shrugged. Not always, but she's more high-strung that she can't do much with Naruto. Jinx growled, splashing some water on them. Who gave you the right to talk about me like you know what I am thinking or feeling? For you information I can do a lot with Naruto if I wanted, but right now I think it's good to go slow, so there. Catwoman giggled. Why take it slow? I bet he would enjoy having someone so passionate about him give him some loving. Jinx blushed and huffed, turning away and finishing her shower. No thanks, I know what happened to him to make being slow a good thing. Catwoman got confused by that. A boy his age, from what she saw he was like 18 truthfully, 21, 
and would be having a lot of dirty thoughts and hormonal changes to make him want to get in a girl's panties. What happened then? Jinx sighed. He was in love with a girl who cheated on him multiple times with two other guys and beat him to hell so much I swear he should have killed her for that. Catwoman frowned. Well that's just rude and mean. How could she? He seems like an easygoing and nice guy. Jinx smiled sadly. He is. Probably why he still won't kill her. But either way, because of everything in his life before joining us, I will take it slow with him. Hoping he finally sees I truly love him. Eek. She covered her mouth and turned to see a grinning Cheshire and Catwoman. That. Came out. Sorry. She got her clothes and went into the part of the bathing room for dressing. Catwoman smiled. So sweet. I probably should stop teasing, but it's so much fun. Cheshire turned and smiled, blushing a little. I also care for the blonde, but only because he saved me and seems he could teach me about really being a ninja. Catwoman grinned. Well, seems you are taken by his charms too. Who knows, I may see what's so charming about him myself and be entwined with love. Batman is too serious for me anyway. Cheshire looked skeptical over that and pushed Catwoman a bit. Don't even joke. Why would he take more than one person to love anyway? Catwoman giggled and finished washing up. Probably because felines don't care about the amount of lovers. We just choose who we love and do so, no matter who or how many. Cheshire just stared blankly as Catwoman went to dress in her normal clothes, not her costume. Cheshire was there standing, until the water went cold after a minute or two and shivered, finishing quickly and running out, blushing. Maybe I can be with him too. Yeah. Jinx came out first and blankly stared as Private Hive was getting the shit beat out of him by Mammoth, and Gizmo was currently being chased around by Shigo, who had come from training to wash and found the boys trying to peek. Naruto stood with the bowl of cereal in front of him and looked at it sighing. Need milk. He then got slammed into the head with Private Hive's shield and was staring blankly, before slamming the bowl down and climbing up the counter. Jinx shivered, seeing Naruto's eyes activate into the two different eyes again. Oh crap, this is bad. Naruto grabbed Gizmo, slamming him into the ground and dragging him and his gear to the other fight going on and slamming him between the two and forcing them all apart. That's enough you damn morons. Hive, Gizmo, you should know better. Mammoth, you need to keep a better grip on Hive. And Hive, why the F did you hit me with your shield? Mammoth was stiff and knew this Naruto quite well. This was where you should shut up, be friendly, and listen or else get the shit beat out of you so hard you can't walk for a week. He knows, he had it happen to him five times back in the academy. Hell, one guy who got on Naruto's shitty side actually thought he was a little girl, when he was actually a muscle man who can create an armor of crystal, and paraded around in a tutu, and had ribbons in his long hair, around fifteen to be precise. Hive stood straight and saluted. Sorry sir, I will make sure to behave from now on, I am sorry. Gizmo frowned. Sorry, I was interested in Catwoman. It's not every day you get that beauty showing up at the front door. Shigo bopped him on the head. And how am I and Jinx not beauties? Gizmo growled before calming down. Loosing his cool with Naruto in a rage was a bad idea. Jinx is a sister to me, you disgusting-minded girl. And I did stare quite a bit when you came, before you bashed my head in, mixed signals much. Shigo sputtered and was ready to slap him again, but Naruto flared his chakra and kai at her. You'll stall that strike or feel my wrath. Shigo stood at attention, feeling death on her. Naruto sighed. Shigo, he is right you are giving mixed signals. It is in a guy's nature to look upon someone they think are attractive. Also, girls do that as well. We guys just are more lenient. Why can't you girls be the same? Shigo looked a little confused. What do you mean more lenient? Besides, I never looked at anyone attractive before. Naruto sighed heavily. Because you probably haven't met any attractive guys. I mean really, an old bastard who looks more like a father is your type. I bet not. And we are. We wait for girls to make the first move because when we are the ones to make the first move, we get hit and thought of as perverts or creeps. Shigo was about to speak when Jinx pulled on her shoulder. He's right. Just think about it. Trust me, it's better than the alternative. 
Shigo sighed and smiled. Fine, I will. Naruto nodded and turned to Freeze. What you looking at? Freeze was scared from earlier, but after everything calmed down he turned to his computer again. I'm running low on power. My suit is designed to keep me cool. I can't survive in an environment that is above water's freezing point. I have 15 hours before my power is completely drained, thanks to Gotham PD. I need diamonds. I am trying to find a good source that is easy to hit. Gizmo flew up. We need a supply run anyway. I think we'll hit multiple targets at once and get what we need without the Titans being all over one of us. Naruto crossed his arms, humming in thought. All right, Gizmo, Mammoth, you two take the electronics and stuff we need. Jinx, Shigo, think you can get some of the homie supplies we need to make this base a bit more cozy? As it's always said, women know best in home decoration. Gizmo and Mammoth nodded and started getting a list and looking up what they need. Shigo scoffed. Seriously, me? Jinx grinned. I think we can handle that. Come on, Shigo. We'll get the coolest, most expensive items we can to make this place look the way we want. Naruto nodded. All right, I think I'll go with Freeze. That way, if the Titans try to stop him from getting the rocks, I can stop them from trying. Hi, Cheshire. Think you two can keep Catwoman company here? Catwoman purred as she stepped up. I'll go change. I think I'd like to go see about getting some goodies. Naruto sighed. Fine. Cheshire, Hive, like I said, keep her company. Try to look up anything in Jump if you want, but keep shit clean and safe. We should all get ready and set to move out in the hour. I don't want the Titans thinking of beating one then move on to the new target. We hit simultaneous times and places. Everyone went off to get ready. Freeze stood, grinning. You command well. The team leader I am guessing? Then why are you so laid back? Naruto shrugged. We're thieves, we enjoy ourselves and do what we want, take what we want, and live happily with what we got. Besides, I went easy on them. I'm beat. No breakfast after all the shit I had to go through in Gotham. I feel ready to just hit the hay. Freeze put a hand on Naruto's shoulder. I can respect that. Look, I found a good source to pull from, see? Naruto looked at the screen and thought about the location in the city. Seems easy enough. But could you have picked a closer location to the damn Titan's Tower? You can't be serious. Freeze shrugged. I figure I'll get in, power up a little for a fight, and whilst we wait I get more power and diamonds for the long haul. I asked a few friends to come chill with me, but I didn't know where this place was, so they should be out in the city. I asked them to bring some of my machinery I stored back when I was in Metropolis. Naruto blinked in confusion. Metro? You're joking. When did you go to Metropolis? Freeze chuckled. Lex Luthor became president and put a price on Superman's head. I went after it with them. I was going to use a special machine designed to freeze a city to freeze him internally. Thing was, I was caught before I could activate it. Naruto nodded. Okay then. So these friends, who are they? Freeze shrugged. They're cool people. Killer Frost, Captain Cold, Icicle SR. Naruto blinked and looked at him tiredly. Sounds like more ice villains. Freeze chuckled. They are. Frost and Icicle Jior are the only ones who can manipulate the cold and ice however they wish without any help from devices. Me, Isar, and Captain Cold need suits and weapons. Either way, we are a force to be reckoned with. Naruto nodded, accepting that, then looked a little puzzled. Wait, why bring those devices here? Freeze grinned. In case the Titans think they have power over us, we'll just freeze them to sculptures. Naruto twitched. No, don't even try. Any villainy here and I will personally send you into the heater for that shit. This is my town, I don't give a shit if you visit, but don't wreck the joint. Freeze frowned. But if those pesky Titans try anything I'll defend myself with it. Naruto glared tiredly at Freeze, before sighing and walking off. Fine, whatever, as long as the city ain't in danger, I don't give a crap what you do. And with that, the team all got ready. With the Titans. So, where are the soft targets? Batgirl asked Cyborg as Robin was searching out potential theft areas for Catwoman. Cyborg thought about that a little. My guess would be three main targets. 
one in uptown, another by Washington Street, and the third being on the edge of town by the mountain range. Only diamond stores I know that would be soft enough to hit. Batgirl nodded, humming. Freeze would most likely choose the one farthest from here. I think that third option might be where we should go. Robin picked up a few things on the list. These seem right up her alley. The twin eye cat necklace at the museum, and the Egyptian all-seeing golden cat statue that Star Labs has set up as a priceless addition being auctioned off to help increase revenue to be a better corporation. Beast Boy grumbled. These two are a bit too synced when it comes to this. Hey, why are you two so good at finding these guys? Batgirl sighed. Because in Gotham we have insane people instead of normal crooks and villains. Your villains have a theme but normally go after you or try to get money. Ours have themes and use them to the extreme. Robin nodded. That's right. Joker and Harley go off on a killing spree or try to make jokes whilst hiding our or stealing joke-themed items. Freeze goes after diamonds, stays in cold places, and usually tries to make Gotham go back into the Ice Age. Starfire came up. So this Freeze will go after those clear rocks, correct? Static was just watching shit go down, and Raven came up to him. Why aren't you giving any input? Static smiled. Cause I can't. I have no idea about jump, and only slight knowledge of Gotham. I ran into Harley and Ivy once, but that was a while back. I can't be much use in information yet. What about you? Raven shrugged. I'm usually passive, and everyone else seems to be having their fun figuring things out. Besides, with a lot of people here I can't do much. Batgirl and Robin are most experienced with this. Static nodded. I heard you. So, give me a rundown whilst we wait. Kitsinex, he that good. Raven nodded. When he was Red X he was able to fight us off decently enough. But as Kitsinex we've yet to seriously fight him. Static blinked in confusion. Serious? He's never fought you as Kitsinex. Raven shrugged. Not really. The only fight we had with him as Kitsinex was during the time a holding cell was being attacked. He kicked out butts so fast he was there and gone in the blink of an eye. He seemed pretty angry. Static hummed in thought. Seems strong. Caught you all off guard? Raven nodded and walked to get more tea. Yeah, pretty fast. So, what did your parents think of all this? Static flew over with her. My pops was pretty rough on me for it. But after a bit he accepted it was part of who I was and let me do my thing. I told him I wanted to be a better person and hero and wanted to join a team that would help me out. I thought of you guys. That's how I got BZZT BZZT BZZT. Robin responded to the sound fast and looked at everything that was going on. Simultaneous thefts all around the city. Seems Kitsinex and Freeze are getting diamonds at the closest diamond store in town near us. Gizmo and Mammoth were spotted going to Star Labs, and seems Private Hive is attacking a local museum. Where that cat item is. Catwoman might be there. Batgirl growled. That's some crazy timing. Who could have thought of this? Robin glared at the screens. Kitsinex, no doubt. Barb, Static, Star, you're with me on Kitsinex and Freeze. Cyborg, Raven, Beast Boy, go deal with Mammoth and Gizmo. Catwoman is too flirtatious for any of you to go against, and we need to at least stop the major stuff. If Freeze gets enough power, we'll be goners. Titans, go. The team ran off to their assigned tasks, and Robin had a single thought. How do I battle my old enemy and my new enemy? Kitsunex, how strong can you be? With Naruto and Freeze. Naruto was piling up as many diamonds as he could for Freeze, trying to be helpful. Hey, he also had a few shadow clones out and about to get food. He wanted breakfast. Ugh. Hey, we better go, no telling when the titans will hit. Freeze sighed, putting a good amount of diamonds in his power core. Refreshing. Just a few more and we'll leave. Freeze grabbed a pretty big diamond from the main case. Everything freezes. Ah. Hey Freeze, been a while hasn't it? Are you whelmed yet? Freeze turned, Naruto turning as well to see Robin, Starfire, Static and Batgirl. Freeze chuckled. I feel whelmed all right. So, a rodent followed me here. That is underwhelming though. Naruto waved. Yo, never thought I'd see Red again. Who's this new guy though? Static smirked. 
Mind if I help myself? The name is Static, and I'll put a shock to your system, remember that? Static fired off a shock bolt at Naruto quickly. Naruto looked in surprise and jumped away. That's shocking all right. All right then, let the games begin. Wanna play with that shit? I can do you one better. Naruto started some hand seals and in a flash he was done. Asura Lightning Naruto clapped his hands together and suddenly bolts of lightning fired all around, the glass and wood and metal of the store picking up from the generating field around him as well as bolts firing at the team before him. Static caught a single bolt and absorbed it before zooming in, Robin and Batgirl having to dodge out of the way and Starfire following in after Static. Naruto slammed his hand into the ground. Rocky Horror The earth itself rose form under the floor and spiked at Static and Starfire, but Starfire bullied her way through it all and tried to hit him with a glowing energy hand. Naruto caught her throat and threw her into Static who dodged to the right to get at Naruto. Static caught her instead and zoomed off as Naruto breathed in and let another jutsu fly. Fire Cavern A swirl of fire hit the store wall and bursting it into flames. But not only that, it followed along the wall and shot out around and back to him, making a small room. Naruto hit the wall he made and pulled. Water Whip He pulled the water form the very earth, making it crumble down back to the floor as he hit his fire cabin and steam shot out from the store in heavy amounts. Naruto and Freeze got out of there, and Naruto used his X-ray vision seeing everyone inside. Fine by me, Freeze. Freeze laughed as he turned and fired his Freeze Ray, turning the steam to ice and everyone being trapped within. Like the cavemen, you also will be exhibits, ha ha ha. Just as they were going though, Freeze stopped and grinned. Ah, the cool air was refreshing without you, but now I feel even better with this cold air of partnership. Naruto sighed. Great. Now I gotta deal with your bitch asses. In front of them were Killer Frost and Gang, as well as the Konoha flunkies. Naruto huffed. Whatever. I have no time to deal with this shit. Freeze, don't bother coming back to base if these guys are going to be with you. Bye. He suddenly used Hurishin to get back to base. I don't want to face them right now, but I feel I have to soon. Breakfast first with Gizmo and Mammoth. Mammoth was carrying two big machines and Gizmo had a big bag of gadgets. Gizmo grinned. With these I think we can even use medical skills to help in case of wounds. I hate having to be out of the game due to injuries. They're gonna be getting a lot worse if you don't put that shit down. Mammoth grunted and growled lowly. Gizmo scoffed. Great, the shit for brains, Robo Wimp, and Barf Girl. Can't you leave us alone? We don't have the damn time to fight you. Cyborg aimed his cannon at Gizmo. Don't think of this as a fight and just give up and it won't have to get ugly. Put the stuff down. Raven went up a little and uncovered her hood, trying the old scare tactic with her magic. To no effect, Mammoth laughed loudly. You think that's scary? You should see Kitsunex when he gets mad. Sorry, ain't gonna work. Gizmo let his shit down and grinned his pack opening up and firing energy blasts at Raven, who flew off, dodging them. Mammoth came up quick, catching her feet and swinging her around. Suddenly a baseball field appeared around them and Mammoth was dressed in a uniform as Cyborg ran up to him. Play ball! Raven turned into a bat and Mammoth used her to slam into Cyborg and make him fly back, Raven flying off with him, and quickly everything went back to normal. Beast Boy turned into a rhino and charged but found he entered a portal of some kind and was in the air over the titan's tower. He turned into a coyote and put up a sign saying WTF before falling body first, his head stretching and staying in the air before the rest of him started falling. Beast Boy turned into a raven and started flying back to Star Labs and found Cyborg and Raven groaning, and 2-2 and their theft goods gone. He frowned. What happened guys? Cyborg rubbed his head. Kid Wicked appeared, made you disappear and help them escape. Damn, that hurt. Raven you all right? Raven held her head, nodding. You're harder than you think, but I'll be okay. Robin ain't gonna like this. Let's go help him out, since we got nothing better to do. With that they went to see that. They were frozen in a block of ice. Crap, Raven breathed deeply. Azerath Mitrian Zinthos, using her dark power to pull the block out to see what was inside. 
Inside was Static, who seemed to be sparking, and Starfire was glowing and suddenly the ice burst and everyone was free. Turns out, all they needed was space for the ice to be pushed out from on all sides. Robin groaned. Damn. That was new. Thanks guys. Static, Star, Barb, you alright? Star shivered lightly. F fine friend Robin. Static nodded, using his electromagnetism to warm himself and Star. Batgirl and Robin shone no signs of cold. Possibly used to it by now. Batgirl frowned. All right, Kitsunex is a major threat here. We have to regroup, I think I saw the other four ice villains after we were frozen. Robin frowned deeper. That's not good. This won't be good. All five at the same time? We're in trouble. I'll call some backup. Naruto smiled, content as he had just ate five bowls of cereal for his breakfast, nearly downing half a gallon of milk to eat it all to finally get some energy and food from his wild night in Gotham. He went to see their loot room, the room where they store their newly gathered shit to go around. Jinx and Shigo were currently talking about where to put their new six-foot-wide, five-foot-tall plasma screen TV to rearrange the living quarters to accommodate. Mammoth was carrying some medial gear to the room down the hall, which was free to use as their medical ward, nearly perfect since it had lots of room. Gizmo wiring some shit together already so Mammoth didn't have to make multiple trips, he did wonder though where Catwoman was. Cheshire burst in, panting in exhaustion. Bad news, Mr. Freeze took Catwoman and froze her. I nearly got away before four more cold villains and a group of weird people tried to stop me. Everyone halted, and Cheshire froze. Naruto turned, releasing a good amount of killing intent as he growled. Excuse me, did I hear you right? Freeze and those Kanoha losers are about to kill a fellow thief? Cheshire nodded a little, and Naruto stomped to his room. All right, that's the last straw. They want to provoke me. They got me provoked. They looked as he dished out in Kitsunek's uniform and walked to the living quarters. He turned. Don't even think about leaving this room. I can't guarantee your safety. If I use my more crazy moves. As he left, Jinx shivered. Yeah. Gizmo, you made sure to reinforce every single scrap of this base in case of his heavy techniques, right? Gizmo paled. I didn't think he could get that scary. No way I prepared for this since I thought he would be a little more laid back. That cheater and those flunkies. They're as good as dead now, and I do not feel sorry for them. Shigo finally started to breathe from her forced inhale and holding it in from that scare, and looked to Jinx. Okay, fill me in on this. How strong can he be? How badly will he destroy these guys? Jinx turned to her, serious and paler than usual. Back during the Hive Academy days when he was known as Kitsyun, he generated a tornado made out of fucking lightning that, we later found out, nearly made the base explode from the force and tension it had created on all its supports and generators. Gizmo, the tape. Gizmo put up a small screen form his backpack and showed her his recording and she paled as well. That? It's like Superman and the Flash just worked together to create that shit. Jinx nodded. That was around 10% of his power, he said. One time I was dating this weird dude with power over the wind, but much less than Naruto. He could only pull off gusts. The guy broke my heart and Naruto did something to him. I have no idea, but it was so bad he couldn't use his powers anymore and he was unable to walk. Mammoth gulped. I saw what he did. Naruto strung him on a stretching torture table and cut into him multiple times and bending fingers back and forth. And ripping hair from his arms legs and chest however little slowly and harshly and burning him with fire and freezing him with ice and to end it he summoned a demon. That pulled the powers right out of the dude. And then he broke every bone from toes to hips. Every. Last. Bone. Jinx would have nearly vomited from the scene in her head, but then again that bastard broke her heart in an attempt to get with a friend of hers he deserved it. She turned to Shigo. Yeah. Combine what we told you. Crank it up fifty times, and that is going to be what he does to everyone who pissed him off. Shigo nodded. All right then. Shall we head to the most fortified position in the base? And everyone nodded in sync and said in sync one word. Let's with the titans. Robin shrugged off the last feeling of cold he had on him. 
Now, he and Batgirl fax freeze so many times, cold to them was nothing. But like hell it wouldn't affect them to be frozen. Beast Boy was quite curious. Dudes, what the hell happened? Starfire was rubbing her arms to stay warm. I do not have the slightest clue, friend Beast Boy. The Kitsunex was really powerful. Robin went to the computer and pulled up the file again. I should have listened to that guy. Kitsunex is way dangerous. He seemed to be pretty irritated. Batgirl turned to him. Irritated? My ass, that shit was hell. He looked to be pretty damn mad. Wait, what is this information? Robin looked to Batgirl. I thought you may not have this information. There's a guy who is from the same dimension Kitsunex is in, told me a good deal about him. See, Kitsunex is hell with power. He's only been using his fists and a special technique that teleports him using kunai though, meaning he doesn't want to use that power he has. Static frowned. Seriously, he generated lightning, fire, water, and earth. I'm just glad he didn't try wind. Robin pulled up the video file, and Static's mouth was wide open. That shit ain't right. You're telling me he's able to pull that shit off, and we weren't prepared? Robin sighed heavily. We knew. Like I said though, he hasn't tried anything like that with us ever since he first put on the X alias. Turns out he'll be tough this time. Good thing I had this feeling, and called in backup. Batgirl looked confused. Backup? Who the fuck do you think can help with this shit? I might as well call in Supergirl. Robin grinned. I already called in a super. And just as he said that, the door opened and everyone turned. Robin smiled. Ah, there they are. At the door were two guys. One was a guy who was wearing normal blue jeans and a black t-shirt with the Superman shield on the front, and he himself looked like a younger Superman. Yo Robin, sorry I'm late. You sounded overwhelmed on the phone. Anyway I can help you be whelmed. The other guy was a dark-skinned man with a tight red shirt and tight black pants, and black tattoo like lines going down his arm like a snake, and a pack on his back with two sticks that looked like weapon handled on the back. And his hands and feet looked webbed and his neck had gills. The man smiled. Nice to see you again Robin, I see you got in touch with your inner leader, as I predicted. Robin stepped up and between the new people who entered and his team. Connor, Kaldur, been a while, let me introduce everyone. Titans, these are two of my former teammates. Meet Superboy and the first Aqualad. Guys, this is my new team. Starfire went up, smiling as she was happy to meet more of Robin's friends. Hello, friends of Robin, it is marvelous to meet you. The rest of them came up and D. Robin smiled. Guys, this is Starfire, he pointed to each consecutively as he mentioned them. Raven, Beast Boy, Cyborg, and Static. That girl is just visiting, but I guess this is the first time you've seen her. Superboy chuckled. Seems pretty steady. Glad to meet you all, I'm Superboy, and not to be confused with Superman. I'm my own hero. Kaljur nodded. It is most delightful to meet the team Robin is leading with great skill. I am glad to be here today. Starfire went to Superboy. I only know of Superman. Please, tell me, what can you do as a hero? Superboy shrugged. I can't do most of what the big guy can. I can leap tall buildings in a single bound but can't fly. I am really strong and fast as well, but nothing near the big man. What I lack in actual power. I make up for in skill, thanks to training with Robin, Kaldur and Black Canary. Beast Boy looked to Kaldur. So, I met the other Aqualad. What makes you guys so different? Kaldur smiled and put his hand out, and Beast Boy took it, and he started feeling a slight tingle and sent Kaldur producing electricity. Static blinked. That doesn't seem to be water-based, and that is more like my power. Kaldur chuckled. No, it is not basic electricity. See, I am able to generate my own body's electrical power and use it against my opponents like a taser, but it has another function. I am able to generate it through my body and into these handles. He took the handles from his pack, the tattoos glowing blue as he pulled them out, and water formed from the handles and created two maces. To create any weapon I desire. Kaldur shone what he meant, forming different shapes and sizes of swords, maces, axes, and even a shield. He then put it all back. Raven whistled. Not bad. But something is a little strange. 
I may not know Superman, but I don't think he has a magical aura. They all looked at her in confusion. Superboy blinked before scoffing. What are you talking about? What aura? Robin looked at Raven. You sense a magical aura around him. What do you mean? Raven nodded. She sighed. Superboy has an aura about him, something like psychic powers. Superboy thought about it, and realized what she meant. Oh, yeah, a tactile telekinetic field, I know. Miss Martian told me about it when she and I were still dating. Robin looked to him in confusion. We're still? Meaning you're not with her anymore? Superboy shook his head. She told me that it could never work, her being from a different planet and all. I didn't care what planet she was from, but she just went off. She's ignored me ever since. Kaljur put a hand on Superboy's shoulder, and then turned to everyone. We got the distress by Robin, so what's the trouble? Robin nodded, giving Cyborg a little tap. Fill them in. Static, a little word. As the Titans went to sea with Kaljur and Superboy, Static and Robin went out into the hallway. Static looked at Robin with a puzzled look. All right, man, what's up? Something's eating at you. Robin nodded, sighing. Part of me is emotionally distressed. Having someone I used to love, and still do, here now, it made me start reverting to my old self. And my memories and those feelings don't mix well. Otherwise I would have been much more cautious with Kitsunex. I'm sorry I let you and Star get caught in that. Static smiled, walking up to Robin and putting a hand on his shoulder. Listen, if anything, you gave us a wake-up call. I'll make sure to be more careful next time. Though I wouldn't worry about Batgirl, I was planning on having a talk with her later, something I should have done on the way here. I knew you'd be a little out of it from her. Robin smiled and nodded. Thanks. By the way, Kaldir isn't using electromagnetism or anything you have. He is using bioelectrical power as a water sorcery skill he learned in order to use his powers. So, let's go make sure everything is set for BZZT BZZT BZZT. They ran into the room and seeing the city turning ice blue, and turning into ice completely, and that got Robin going. Titans, move, get out and into the air, go go go. Kaljur was shocked. Freeze is doing this. All right, let's go. Everyone gone out and Starfire carried Cyborg, Raven carried Kaljur, Static carried off Robin, and Beast Boy turned into a pterodactyle and got Batgirl going whilst Superboy refused to be carried and just jumped off the building and into the air. They made good time, as just when they left, the tower got hit, the water surrounding the city freezing, and then freezing the tower cold. Superboy landed on the shore on the far side, as everyone landed with him. Robin cursed. Freeze, cold, icicle SR, and Junior, and frost. They turn jump into the North Pole. Damn Roman too. Titans, let's get a plan here. Superboy came up. I say we rush in and find them, then break their jaws. Static turned to them. Whoa, hold on. How did they do this though? How could they turn the entire city into Ice City? Cyborg tapped into his systems and tried to figure out what it might be and groaned. Interference from the cold. Can't tell you, but I have a single guess. Freeze is a genius, right? He could have built a machine. Robin slapped his face. If it was a snake. He tried this in Gotham a few times, we always stopped him before he froze the entire city. But this time he took us by surprise. Superboy focused hard, trying to see further into the city, and hummed. They're not alone. Seems they're moving around a bit, but they also have some kind of group with them. They don't. Seem to be the type to hang with ice villains. Raven sensed into the city, and gasped. Multiple energy signatures similar to Kitsunex. Wait, didn't that guy tell us that there were more that came with him and Kitsunex? This can't be good. Kaljur crossed his arms. That doesn't seem well. From what you told us, Kitsunex is dangerous. More like him? That does not bode well. Still, we have to save the city, and fast. Beast Boy cracked his knuckles. All right, enough of this, guys, I don't know about you, but if we don't hurry everyone will die. Robin shook his head. Not entirely. See, freeze usually cryogenic ally freezes people. They're frozen, but preserved. Still, we do have to hurry. We still need a plan. Kaljur nodded. 
I say we go in and find out what is going on first and foremost. Without a solid situation report, we can't even acknowledge what will happen. Starfire flew up a little and looked. Why would they do this? Batgirl pulled her back down. Listen, this is what they do. Robin, Batman, me, we've been fighting this for years. We'll continue to fight it. Right now, we get going. The longer we wait here, the longer they have to get everything ready to freeze more of the world. Robin nodded. And got in front. Titans. Move out, we don't let a single second go to waste. Go. With that, they began their flight back into the city. Little did they know, what they would find. Would be hell on earth. With Freeze and the Kanoha Ninja. Kakashi hummed. I'm a little worried. Having this girl frozen as a hostage won't bring any bad news, right? Neji sighed. I don't know. She was with a girl. Who was she? Freeze came up to that. The girl was called Cheshire. She is part of a team, and the leader of said team was the guy you saw me with. Everyone froze at that. Eno looked pale. You're telling me we just kidnapped and froze someone Naruto knows and befriended? Oh no. No 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 no. Not good. Kakashi put hands on Eno and Temuri from jumping at Catwoman. Hold it you two. I don't like this any more than you do, but we have to make damn sure to stay calm. We try it and Naruto will have no reason to hold back against us. Sasuke scoffed. Like holding back would make a difference. I can kill the loser with a hand tied behind my back. That got Temuri pissed and tried to grab him but Sakura blocked. Don't even try, bitch. Sasuke is the strongest in the world. He can beat Naruto with both hands behind him. Hinata slapped Sakura to the ground and growled. Naruto burned the village. Sure no one died. But that was him at one tail, imagine all nine, and sage mode, he will kill us. I say we let this girl go and hide, because Naruto will kill everyone in an attempt to stop this. Freeze walked off, a little nervous about this now. How they think Naruto would be that strong. No way he is like Superman in strength level. He didn't seem like so when I was with him. Temuri was pissed and scared. You have any idea how the fuck shit will go down? Pissing Naruto off and asking him to fight us is like saying hey, you just instigated your own murder, come on down, and that's just how he'll begin. Hinata walked off, turning on her by a Kugan and making sure Naruto wasn't already on them. Neji came up to her. You worried? Or are you going to sit this one out? Neji knew Hinata enough to know that she wouldn't fight Naruto, only help him. He knew deep down Hinata wanted to crush the ice villains, save the city, and help Naruto defeat Sasuke and then try to be with him. Hell, she would join the Titans somehow and help save the city just for Naruto's sake, maybe even have a way to always see him, seeing as he was the Titans' enemy now. Hinata was focused. Sitting it out. I won't do anything. And let Naruto beat those whores, the ice villains, and that bastard of an Uchiha into the ground and save the city. And then, I will talk to him. And hope beyond hope, he will accept me somehow. Neji nodded, and smiled sadly. I may fight him, and try to bring him back. But I do understand, and I wish you the best. Hinata nodded, and sighed. His turning the village into ash, was the scariest part of his leaving. Neji shivered and remembered it. Yeah, I didn't think he could do that. How long has he been holding back that power? Flashback, Kanoha still intact. Naruto was furious. No, actually, Naruto was pissed right the fuck off. He just had seen his bitch of a girlfriend, Temuri, go against his back again. Hell, he was still a virgin. Not one girl he was with said anything about this shit. Sakura would berate him every time he woke up with a morning hard on the hell. That was natural, and gone behind his back multiple times. Eno would kick his ass just for staring at her ass every time she decided to tease him f the hell up. I mean who teases a guy to make him corny and then try to kill them, and them Temuri. Temuri was a little better about it. She wouldn't hurt him, slap him, try to kill him for anything like that, though she did want things to go slow. Next thing he knows she sleeps Shikamaru. Then after fixing what little remained of their relationship, she did it again. That was the final fucking straw. Now, he had just gotten back from a hellish a rank mission, seeing as he was an Anbu captain now, and was currently going to report in. That was when the proverbial domino effect finally toppled the last domino in the line, 
and over the cliff. He came into the office and put the scroll on the table and Sunade sighed. All right, Gaki, let it out. What happened? Naruto had his back to her, trying to get out so he could vent his frustrations in the Anbu training grounds. Training ground 44, the forest of death. He stood still, unmoving, breathing calmly. Let's just say I got my memories back, and shit happened with Temeri. You didn't know, did you? Me and her have dated, and she cheated on me twice. Well, I think I should go now, Hawkage sama and not lock it all in, so I don't burst when I am needed. Just as he got to the door, he had opened it to see Danzo standing there and frowning at the boy. I was just about to have Tsunade call for you. You are needed by the council. Your requests have finally come to the table. Yeah, his requests were simple. He gains all Namikaze property, and, as said in the will from his father, to gain the scroll of sealing as his personal property. The money he was supposed to get from the Yuzumaki fortune that was fused with the Namikaze account would be split in two, half going to help the village in its shinobi educations, and building what needs rebuilt or whatnot, and the other half going to him. He followed with Tsunade and Son, they were hearing a massive clusterfuck. Homaru stood. Your request for the Namikaze properties is denied, for they are not for you, but the heir of the Namikaze. Naruto nearly blew right then and there. He was a Namikaze. Tsunade did blood tests, piss tests, even semen samples, hell even arguments on the looks since he was practically a damn clone of his father in the first place. And who the fuck heard of an Uzumaki without red hair? Papers on the marriage. More blood tests to see about Kushina, and he passed everything the council ever wanted every single thing was a check mark, not an X. Hell, he hated X's anyway. They were three of them he would rather kill than speak to again. Naruto shrugged. Well, as much as I wanted the great house, as long as I get some kind of actual decent place to live in I don't mind that. Homura glared at him a little. Denied, you pay like everyone else. The scroll of sealing which was to be left to the Namikaze heir, you will not get. Because again, you are not the Namikaze heir. Now, first, Naruto thought if he had to pay, sure, but right now, there was a room full of people who should pay at this point. He let out a bit of Kai and glared back at the council. Say again? Who isn't? I passed every single test. My blood, the paperwork, the agonizingly difficult SS rank only meant for the hawkage type missions. The massive bloodbath I created in Iwa after their attempt to assassinate you all in the first place, and you say I am not. I have the strength, the blood, the legal documentations, and you will steal away my birthright. Give me one good reason not to murder you all right now. Danzo stood. We are the council and you obey us, as for the money and huge sum of which that you requested. It will all go into the village funds, and for your threats against us we will freeze your assets and have your chakra sealed. We will not have the Kyubai acting up. You are our weapon to do what we wish. Tsunade pulled on Naruto's arm as he tried stepping to the council and Naruto growled. My own godmother wants to stop me from bringing justice to these assholes. Funny. Tsunade, it would be much funnier watching you eat corn on the cob without any effing teeth. Now unhand me. Tsunade pulled Naruto to her. Listen here, you need to calm the fuck down. You are still my subordinate. Naruto ripped himself from her hold and calmed down, then chuckled darkly. The day I was made into nothing more than an ant. The day my family name, my birthrights, my family fortune, taken from me. The day I realize how many goddamn whores are in this world. Is the day I quit sorry, but if you cared for me at all you would have done something about this. Law is for those who think they are God and they should be dead to name a few. Naruto threw five kunai at five people in the room and suddenly blood spurted from all five Danzo, Hamura, Koharu, Haruno, and some random merchant that almost killed him with five gallons of rat poison when he was still five. Now, seeing all this, the Merchant Guild council members all ran for it, and the ninja started on the attack. Bad fucking move. Shikaku got his ass slammed through the back wall from a powerful kick. Chuza was smacked in the head so hard he flew through five desks before rolling down unconscious. Hayashi was thrown out the window and racing Gan to the street from that level without a cushion. And he was still inside the room. 
He grabbed the Inuzuka woman by the hair and slammed her head to the ground face first on all fours before kicking her ass, his foot slamming into her ovaries even, and making her fly into Yugao, and then slashed into the rest of the Anbu troop before he turned to Tsunade and roared. Tsunade was scared shitless as he turned, emanating a four-tail Kuyubai cloak as he spoke and yelled. See how fucking easy that was? See how powerful I am. It's because I had to be in order to be named the Namikaze heir. I hurry shine those five Agiles who screwed me. Now they are no more. I still can't be my father's son even after the shit you did. And you say accept it, F that. He went to the window as a fifth tail appeared. This place is done for. I won't kill no one, but this place. Konoha is gonna burn for what they did to me all these years. If anyone tried to fuck with me as I burn it to the ground. They will be thrown into five different walls before they fly into the air and all the way to fucking Kumo. And if you even try to send anyone after me, I swear to God, I will make their lives so much hell they wish I killed them in this fire. I will get mine. A pound of flesh for every single second these assholes f with me. He then jumped into the village and vanished into the fray, and in a single second, she witnessed the village combusted into flames from nowhere, explosions, fireballs, the heat itself made her seat out very drop of water she had since she was a baby up to now. Ninja flying in different directions. She could only imagine what he did to the ones who were his friends. Shikamaru saw Naruto running at him as the village was on fire and yelled, Naruto, hurry, we're under attack. By me, Shikamaru shat himself and was suddenly forced through all the walls, even the outside ones, as a Rasengan went into his stomach and he passed out from the pain alone. Lee was running through the village and tried to use his fast techniques to blow out the fire, when he saw Naruto dropping in on him and blacked out from having Naruto crush him under the weight of a harsh futon jutsu. Ino was forced through hell. As Naruto stripped her naked, rammed a burning piece of wood into her pussy and slammed a horrifying racing gun into her stomach and left her hanging on a burning building. Kakashi seen Naruto coming after that stunt with Lee and was about to catch him, but Naruto rammed a Chidori into his shoulder and dragged him through five buildings before ripping his mask off and punching him brutally till Kakashi was passed out in the hot springs. Neji was suddenly buried under the ground with his head above it and kicked by Naruto repeatedly till he passed out, brutal and quick, and didn't see that Hinata was unharmed, but Naruto had given her a kunai, his father's kunai, with a note saying goodbye. Sakura and Sasuke got it worst. Really. The devil in hell even winced at what happened to those two. Sakura was stung up like Ino, stabbed into by two long blades in her ovaries and five kunai in her womb and a fiery nailed baseball bat rammed into her ass and had a mouth covered in gasoline before the fire hit her lips, but also cut along her body all over and was hit by lightning that kept harming her but not killing her. Sasuke had a damn fucking barbed wire steel tube shoved up his ass and snakes crawling up them into his fucking rectum. Two Chidoris rammed into his stomach and lung, and his penis and balls cut the F off before having them stuffed in his mouth and then having a racing gun forced into his eye socket so his Sharingan wouldn't activate for a month. He knew though that Sakura and even Ino would be healed by Tsunade and Sakura, and he thought Ino too would in turn definitely heal Sasuke back to 100% no doubt. But he had to get his few little tortures in. Chouji, Kiba, Tenten, and the rest of his friends in Konoha, where Jutsu hit into the ground the air or knocked the fuck out and after it was all said and done, he broke into the Hawkage Tower and stole his birthright, and left in a hurry, leaving the village in flames as he went to the Valley of the End to wait for Tsunade's response to his request to be left alone. End flashback. Ino was shaking and trying to figure out how to get out of this alive. We're dead, we're dead, we're dead, we're dead. We are so royally. Kakashi had a slight shiver. I do feel impending doom about to come on us. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea. With Naruto. Naruto wasn't five steps from the hub ace before shit went to ice. And he was on ice. For about one second, before he burst into two tail form, his cape turning into two tails, and burst the ice off. He brushed the shards from his shoulder and turned, making five clones. Keep this place warm and able to breathe. I will go handle the ice maker who thought this up. The clones got to using fire jutsu and he walked through the streets, cracking his knuckles. 
Time for Kitsunex to show why you never get on his bad side. Kyubai grinned as he saw the ideas in Naruto's head. That's it Kit, tear them limb from limb. Don't leave anything for that bastard medic team to ever try to heal. Make them suffer. Burn. Whatever, just kill them ha 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 ha. Now, Naruto didn't think this possible. But apparently, those ice villains wanted to make sure no one got to them so quick so used to people barging in, they worked up a plan. And hell was this one. Naruto was in a four-way street and was surrounded by ice sculptures. That moved and had sharp weapons for hands. Naruto scoffed, his tail showing four tails and a red aura around him. You obviously do not know who you are effing with. The ice monsters charged him, and that was when shit got real. He threw a kunai into the air as hard as he could and then proceeded to rip the monsters to dust. He kicked the head off one, shoved a racingan into another, twisting and making a third slice five others in a single swing before throwing it with a racingan in the stomach making it break and the others behind it shatter as well, and opened his rinnegan eye, blasting ten others into the air and dead. He then used Hurishan to the kunai in the air and breathed in. Take this, tailed beast bomb. Naruto fired off a roaring red blast into the center of the mass and killed every single one of them and even four buildings to nothing. Thankfully Naruto seen no one was in them, since this was an abandoned part of town. He landed and started walking again. Did not know what they were fucking with. Almake, Gotham Chronicles 2, Meet the New Kid. It was dark in Gotham, night had just fallen, and Batman suited up like normal. Barbara was in jump for a whole day, and Bruce had to explain to the commissioner how his girl was at his house to play with Dick whilst he worked, being it a Saturday and all. Truth be told, he kind of wondered about something. What was with the red aura and the cloak turning into a tail when Naruto went and beat the living hell out of the villains the other night? That didn't fit right with him. He would have to keep checks on that to see what it all means. He also had to see Dig after a while. It's been a good year now since they last spoke. And when they last spoke, Dig gave him a right hook to the jaw. He was out doing some investigating on the Black Mask's newest little project, parking his car and going in the warehouse to see what a snitch he knew could tell him. Little to nothing, but it was better than being completely listless. He came out after his talk and seen the Batmobile was taken apart, all four wheels gone, a few parts here and there, muffler on the ground. And just as he was about to go look for clues, a little boy with a wrench got up from under the car and put it behind him. Batman came up to him. Do you know who I am, boy? The boy nodded furiously. Batman narrowed his eyes. Do your parents know you do this to others? The boy looked down, saddened, and Batman saw the look of a lonely boy without a parent's care. It has been so long since he last saw that look, since Dig, since himself. Batman put a hand on the boy's shoulder, kneeling down in front of him. What is your name? And how would you like to be adopted under my care? The boy brightened up, in shock and surprise as well as disbelief. After a while and the Batman smiling at the boy, the boy smiled back. Jason. Jason Todd. And it would be an honor, sir. Would you really adopt me? Batman nodded and stood. First thing is first though. I need my car fixed. Think you can handle that? The boy grinned and got back to work, this time fixing the car instead of breaking it apart. Batman looked at the boy as he worked, and looked in the direction of Jump City, deep in thought. I can't make this boy the new Robin, unless Dig gives back the mantle. I'll have to see him tomorrow and tell him he has to give it back to me. Hopefully he doesn't take it too hard. The Titans halted as they seen, from the outskirts, a huge blast suddenly level four huge buildings. Raven was shaking. That's impossible. That's demonic, even greater than, than should be possible. They themselves were just entering the city. Superboy turned to Robin. Yo, Rob, tell me something. What do you have us against? Robin shook his head, wondering what the hell that was. I have no clue. That doesn't seem natural, and nothing I have seen before. Raven was paler than usual, shaking harder. That's impossible. The rage. The menacingly evil demonic rage this being is generating is impossible. It's a low S-class demon energy. But its power is B-class right now. What's going on here? They were obviously talking about Naruto, or Kitsunex actually right now, but they did not know it yet. 
Suddenly, ice sculptures started forming and coming at them with weaponry. Robin growled. Titans, attack! Robin threw a birdarang and it exploded three of the group of ice monsters before running in to fight hand to hand. Starfire flew into the air and started throwing star bolts all over the place to crush them quickly. Raven was using her magic to pull them into each other and crush them into shards, whilst Cyborg bashed into them and fired his sonic cannon at them every break from punching he took. Beast Boy turned into a Triceratops and just trampled them through. Batgirl ran to one and rammed her shoulder into it, making it fall down before jumping high and slamming a heel into it as head before twisting, throwing a rope around one and using her foot to take the wire to the ground, making the one it wrapped up down as well. Superboy roared as he just smashed into them one by one, throwing one into a group of three and running to the next one. It was a cold battle, and Aqualad created two mace weapons from his handles with water and started just bashing into the creatures, jumping over them and breaking them into the ground. Static was in the air and picking some up and smashing them into others in the group. Superboy was getting pissed off and called out. Everyone, get off the ground when I say go, Robin turned to him. Superboy nodded and jumped into the air. Robin grinned. Titans, do as he says. He grabbed his pole and extended in, pole vaulting himself into the air as Superboy started to descend. Superboy screamed in rage as he was getting close to the ground. Jump now, everyone ignored the next attack and jumped up off the ground and Superboy hit hard, creating a seismic event that flattened the ice creatures to rubble. Everyone landed again and Beast Boy was stoked. BB went to him in excitement. Dude, that was awesome. How did you manage to focus that thing? Superboy smiled. I trained with the best. Any more around? Robin looked into the city, ready for more. No doubt, I'm calling in some faster reinforcements. He grabbed his communicator and switched frequencies. Superboy looked at him and smiled. Ah, I see. He should be here in five minutes if you call right now. You sure though? This ice would make him unable to stop. Robin hesitated, but dialed. I'm sure. We'll need him here. He should be with Donna Wright. Wonder how she's doing. Batgirl came to Robin in slight confusion. Hold up. Who you calling? Donna? Who is that? And how can anyone get here in five minutes from anywhere without permission whilst suiting up unless they're a speedster? Robin smirked. One is a speedster, Kid Flash, and Wonder Girl is with him last I checked. Batgirl blinked a little before nodding and getting back. Robin saw KF come on the communicator. Hey KF, how's it shaking? Doing well I hope. Hey, is WG with you? KF grinned. Oh, hey Rob, yeah, I'm alright. Donna's around town somewhere, I was cleaning up a robbery. So, what you need? Robin nodded. That's good to hear. Listen, we got trouble here. We're up against the Ice Five. They just came to Jump City and froze the place. Think you can give us a hand and bring Wonder Girl with you? KF hummed in thought. Well, that sounds a bit big. But sure, why not? I'll be there in three. See ya then. He hung up before Robin could tell their location in the city. KF only knew it was Jump City. Oh well. Robin put it away and looked to everyone. He'll find us. Let's move out everyone. Just then, they heard gunfire. Now that was strange, everyone should be frozen. The group came up upon a strange sight. Jack and Cannon were unfrozen and firing their custom pistols at the ice monsters, back to back as they did so. Cannon reloaded and jabbed an elbow into Jack's rib and Jack turned, grabbing her and throwing her into one. That caught everyone off guard, until Cannon slammed feet first into one and made it fall, and slammed both knees into its head before getting one foot on the ground, being on one knee now, and turning, taking out a monster coming behind Jack. Jack popped of three rounds to the knee of one and made it fall to a knee before kicking the other leg from under it and grabbing what he could to throw it into the ground and into pieces. Then he reloaded and looked to see the newcomers. Jack sighed in relief. Little help here you kids. Robin snapped out of it and rushed in. Titans, go. Static grabbed Robin and helped him get in the middle of the group before charging his next attack. Superboy bulldozed into a big group behind Cannon to help her out, making damn sure not to get in her way. 
Starfire bullied through a few before flying up and zapping a few with her eye bolts and going down, crashing into a good few more. The Titans mopped them up in no time flat, and no more came in to ambush them. Robin went to Jack. Officer Marley, Officer K. Cannon's public name after she gone into protection services. Jack counted his fingers and Cannon produced two cigarettes. Jack took one and lit it up. Hey kids, got anything to say about this mess? Batgirl stepped forward. One of Gotham's rouges came here, brought his four ice villain friends with him, and we couldn't stop them in time. How are you not frozen? Cannon looked to the frozen squad car near them, with two broken doors. Turns out, being inside a room of some sort blocks you from total freezing. There should be a good half of the city's citizens unfrozen, at least. Robin hummed. This must be a new machine he is trying. Okay then. Starfire, Static, Raven, you go help evacuations, we'll handle the monsters and getting to Freeze and his team. Robin picked them for good reason. Raven's magic would help heat things up a little, but also teleport others out of the city. Static and Starfire could help free ice blocks or unfreeze people and windows or cars to help those trapped or frozen to safety. It was a decent plan, but he knew he was weakening the final strike by doing this. He just hoped something would help them get an edge with this when the time came. With Naruto. Racing in. Chidori. Tailed beast bomb. Naruto huffed at the pile of ash all around him, seven tails of chakra flowing behind him, his cape ripped to shreds. Fuck this. I killed a thousand in an hour, and they still keep coming. What the fuck is going on, ugh? Suddenly he seen something moving at him, and fast, and slammed into him and forced him into a wall. Naruto growled and grabbed the rouge speeding object and noticed it to be a young man, red hair, in a yellow suit he groaned. Great, another thing I can't kill. What the hell is the big idea ramming me at 70 miles per hour? Better yet, how the fuck can you run that fast? You don't look like the Flash to me. KF groaned and stepped back. Name's Kid Flash, his partner. Sorry, was coming from Central, heard Robin was in trouble. Who are you, his teammate? Naruto chuckled lightly. Not quite. You could say me and him have our differences, but as of right now, me and him should be considering a truce. No doubt the Titans are moving about somewhere, but I hope they don't get in my way. KF nodded. All right. So, where's Robin? Need to get to him fast. I didn't ask his general location in the city before I hung up and ran over. Naruto hummed in thought. Best location would be wherever there was fighting, but that would mean his location. And Robin wasn't there so he didn't know. Sorry, no idea. Try looking for him near the big frozen tower in the shape of a T, okay? Best bet to start. Suddenly a young woman flew down. She was wearing a red t-shirt that stopped above her toned stomach, a golden W with three lines wrapping around the top rim, and red pants that stopped just below the knees, a lasso at her hip. Naruto was impressed. Is it me, or is this place and heroines like my world and Kunoichi? I mean really, a Kunoichi's requirement is unspoken but truly for them to be at the very least, cute, same for these girl heroes? Damn, she has a nice rack. Naruto, focus. Wonder Girl looked at Naruto and put her hand out. Hey, Wonder Girl, you? Naruto shrugged and pointed to his mask. Kitsunex. KF turned to Wonder Girl. Come on, he said best bet was at the tea tower. Let's go. KF ran off and Wonder Girl nodded at Naruto and flew off. Naruto blinked. I have a feeling I'll be seeing them again. Real soon and real often. He turned and started down the war path again, growling. Take my eyes of them. One fucking second. Guess Sasuke needs his balls cut off a second time. Maybe I'll just Chidori it. Nah, too easy. A race in Shuriken up the ass? Nah. Hum. What to do to Sakura? He turned and saw. More. Monsters. F this. Okay then. Freeze wants to regrow these things to halt me. He obviously hasn't talked to the Kanoha fuggers. They should know. Hell. Ino and Kakashi for sure. Whoever else is here or whatnot should. Tailed beast bomb. The focused attack destroyed the oncoming attack and he walked through the wreckage, taking his time, planning it out, because he knew they knew. They knew very well, every second they kept a fellow thief and a new friend under ice to lure him out. 
he would destroy them, worse for every second. He was saving frozen people left and right as he passed through the town and an eight tail appeared behind him. He grinned. I won't let them even think about fleeing. They try anything. I will ditch the suit and just turn into you and let you rip their asses. No killing though okay? If anything, I want them to suffer slowly for years before I utterly make them die the most humiliating, painful, and excruciating way possible. Kyubai laughed loudly, booming in Naruto's mind before calming down enough to speak. I'll respect that wish, but somehow I feel sorry for them. Only a little, maybe 0-1%, but still, what you are thinking is massively insane. Naruto grinned at that, feral grinning inside his mask. Oh, would you have it any other way? Kyubai just chuckled darkly, and that was a no if Naruto ever heard one from the fox. Just then, more monsters appeared and Naruto growled. Fucking ice. Fight ice with fire, tailed beast bomb. He destroyed them right off and walked further ahead. Okay, regretting giving Freeze any protections. Hell, I used Jutsu to help divert those titans to help him. Why was Catwoman with him again? Did she think he would be captured and Batman would be sent to easily escape? Ugh. Oh great. In front of him, the titans fell from the sky. Robin glared at Naruto. Why are you here, and what have you done? Naruto looked at Robin, then groaned. I have no fucking time for this. Listen, all I did was help Freeze survive, period. I told him, specifically, that if he trashed jump I would be on him like stink on shit. And I am, as of an hour ago, in the process of collecting his cold butt and processing it to the sharp spikes of ice he created. Robin hummed in thought, then saw the tails behind him and was slightly taken back. You helped make this happen. I guess we can use your help to stop it. But question, why are there spectral tails behind you? Naruto looked behind him and then to Batgirl. You didn't tell him yet? About my tails. Seriously. Okay, listen, and listen good. I have a demon sealed within my body, and I can access its power. It is called the Kyuubai no Kitsune, and very powerful. I use two tails to destroy the shitheads in Gotham. Batgirl nodded, turning to Robin. It's true, although his cape just rolled up into two tails, but the red aura was there. Robin was looking in slight disbelief and remembered what Raven said. Okay then, Kitsunex, you are helping us divert this crisis. KF came rushing in and uncovered his eyes. I still can't believe this guy is one of your rouges. Hey, not nice tricking me you damn fox. Naruto chuckled. Well at least you can have some fun, unlike Chuckles over here. Sorry, I never told you I was with them, I just said the truth, we have our differences. By the way, Chuckles, tell me, you know who is with the ice villains, right? Robin nodded. Same people from your dimension, right? Raven felt their energies. What are they doing here? Naruto pointed to himself. To take me back to the cesspool of a village I burnt whilst leaving when they tried to imprison me for no fucking reason. Seriously, I was the son of a great man that they all respected, and yet they tried to kill me. By all intents and purposes, just because I suggested I want my inheritance. That's so bad, I help them, I serve them most my life, and they decide to use me as a scapegoat. Fuck that shit. After the bullshit I went through, you would say fuck it too. Robin growled. You killed people, just because they didn't let you have your inheritance? That's just evil. Naruto walked up to him face to face. First off, you have no idea how my world worked. We were shinobi by the age of 13, killing for money in the military by choice before we could think about what morals we learned. In my world, death was everywhere. Secondly, all I did was burn the fucking village to the ground. I didn't kill anyone when I torched it, even if I killed five of the fuckers who denied me. Thirdly, you even think about putting any evil shit on my name, I will show you just what kind of fucking shit I had to go through. Robin was just about to retort, glaring in anger, when Naruto punched him. Don't even think about telling me what I did was wrong, you don't know me, you don't know what my life had been like. My life was so fucked up it would make the Joker look sane. Starfire roared in anger at Naruto, who caught her throat and pulled her close. Don't get overprotective. He's a fighter, damn it, but like hell will I be lectured by a naive fucker who doesn't know anything. He threw Starfire back and grew his ninth tail. Now listen up. 
you can either face me, lose, and I save the city alone and probably kill the fuckers who are helping the ice guys, or we can call a fucking truce and the ice villains go down. And I make sure the fuckers from my world are destroyed. Not killed but destroyed, as in beaten to a bloody pulp and left to rot before healing and coming back for more. Robin got up and glaring harshly at Naruto, then settled down. Fine, for now, we work together. But listen well, you even think about betraying us and not keeping your word about that. I will destroy you in the same manner you are talking about. Naruto growled. After the bullshit that happened to me, I don't betray anyone. But you can't even fathom the destructive destroying I will commit upon them. No way you can even come close to destroying me in the same manner, but I understand you. With that, Naruto gestured Robin ahead and Robin started leading the team. Naruto noticed new people though. Okay, so who's the Superman knockoff and Mr. Fish Hands? Superboy came up to him and scowled. I'm no Superman knockoff, I'm Superboy, and like hell are me and the big blue are the same. And this is Aqualad, so you can shut it and keep moving. Naruto glared at him, then shrugged and started walking. Whatever. Now, Chuckles, tell me, where do you think they're held up? Robin turned to him, crossing his arms. You're kidding me, right? Raven is off saving the people stuck in this mess, and even then she can't sense their location until we're closer to them anyway. How about you? You should know your old friends. Naruto glared at him, advancing on him, and Batgirl stepped between them. Hold it. Listen, stop bickering about this. Kitsunex, just ride the flow. Robin, I need to chat with you. Batgirl reared Robin away from everyone before sighing. Listen, Kitsunex is powerful. I know you're skilled, trust me, but he took Batman down. Besides, that massive blast, it was probably him. So bad idea getting on his bad side. He seems pissed already. Let's just go along with it and hope we find a shot. Robin looked to Batgirl, just looking in thought, before sighing heavily and nodding. Sure, I don't like it, but better to bring in some help with this. Still, I wish we could end this and save the rest of the people in the city. They got back to the team but that was shortly the easiest part of the next five minutes. Suddenly, large sculptures appeared from the sky and landed around them. Calger groaned. Not good. Killer Frost is trying to destroy us this time. She'll be getting more difficult monsters from now on. Naruto stepped forward of them. She wants more difficult. She'll need about a trillion times tougher opponent for me. Racingen, 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 tailed beast bomb, like he said, he put three racing guns into one each and blasted a whole horde after them with a horrifying blast that shook the earth. The team were now scared shitless. Naruto turned to them. Just a reminder, to never piss me the F off. You can be serious, you can fight me, you can arrest me even I wouldn't give it F and just go with the flow. But you piss me off, hurt my friends, try to kill them, or disregard my warnings when I only just met you. You better believe I'll get my pound of flesh in return. I'm coming for you Freeze, and your four friends too, not to mention you bitches from Kanoha. Do you fucking hear me? I am coming for you. Oh, they heard him. With the Kanoha Ninja and the Frost Five. Frost cursed, seeing as her brilliant defenses were being torn apart like they were nothing. She started creating bigger, stronger, denser ice monsters. Who the hell thinks it's a good idea to fuck with my monsters? I'll show them. Kakashi chuckled. If Naruto is taking them out, I suggest stopping right now. Nothing you can make will even dent his stamina. Just let him come for us, it'll be fi, do you effing hear me, I am coming for you. Kakashi was a statue himself. Then he sweat dropped and got up. Ino heard it as well, and was tugging at her hair. So dead, so dead, so dead, so fucking dead, so royally dead, will be chunks, no atoms, no weight, single-celled amoebas. Oh who cares, we'll be nothing, absolutely nothing, we're so dead, we should just make our coffins right now. Temery was shaking a little. I seen him at Four Tails before when taking out a mansion of Rain Ninja, and that was scary, but this is Nine Tails, and what he did to Kanoha when I finally got there, that was nuts. No way we're going to live tonight. Hinata was passive, but paler than usual. Naruto's really pissed. I only seen him this pissed once, and it nearly killed father. Oh she remembered that night. Hayashi put a seal on Naruto's forehead one night, 
and attempted to control the boy to submit him under Hyuga rule. And that pissed Naruto right the F off. He broke the seal, and Ten Hyuga tried to forever seal his chakra coils, but that just pissed him off more. He destroyed the Hyuga mansion, leaving everyone alive, and left completely intact. Although, Naruto had cut Hayashi's eyes out and destroyed them before smashing Hayashi through concrete walls and bleeding to where he had to take him to Tsunade to heal. Hinata wished her father didn't take another Hyuga's eyes in order to get back at Naruto. Neji also knew that day, and tried to forget it else he have nightmares all his life. Hell, he even saw Naruto castrate the members of the Council of Hyuga and make them eat dirt until they puked blood. They nearly died, but Tsunade healed them. It was pretty crazy. Sasuke and Sakura were, well, ignoring everything until the time came for them to fight. Doing nothing, and just getting angry Naruto was making them wait. Lee was pissing his pants in fear, hoping Naruto would forgive them somehow. Kakashi was looking at the frozen Catwoman and was sweating profusely. He remembered what Naruto did to him, and he knew why. Him being smashed around like that was because he had abandoned him. Flashback, five months before Naruto torched the village. Kakashi and Naruto were sneaking around Iwa for any information regarding them being hostile to Konoha's forces in Kiri. Kiri and and Konoha had since been friends and kept in touch, sharing forces from time to time. Kakashi told Naruto to go to the border and Kakashi would meet him in Kiri in three days, and Kakashi, after about a day, went to Kumo in order to figure when they would mobilize against Suna. It was about four days in Kumo before he saw Naruto come back, bloody, broken, and rasping breaths. Kakashi was shocked and went to him. Naruto, what happened to you? How did this happen? Shut your mouth or I will rip your head through your ass and use your spine to castrate you and blow your sharing an eye into nothing. You left me for dead in Iwa. Give me one reason not to kill you right now you traitorous piece of shit. The next five days, Kakashi was watching his nuts. Kakashi was distracted by girls in hot springs, abandoned him in Kumo, fucked Tsunami back in Nami no Kuni wave country whilst Naruto was visiting Tazuna and Inari and had forced Naruto to leave that night. End flashback. Yeah, Naruto took it in stride that day, and he should have killed Kakashi, or at least do worse than bash his head in. But he didn't, and the only reason was Kakashi had taught him a lot more jutsu and saved his life the month after. Saving Naruto from dying by Iwa's forces, who sent after Naruto and Naruto was still in recovery after Sakura almost killed him by severing his spine at the base and put him into a coma for even attempting to punch Sasuke, who tried to kill Naruto with his sharing and eyes Amaterasu. He was thinking of trying to thaw Catwoman and take her somewhere else and then return and beg Naruto for forgiveness. True, he thought he and the team could subdue a well-mannered and cool-headed Naruto. But a pissed the fuck off, nine-tailed powered Naruto who could rip this planet apart in a second. Kakashi knew better than that. He sighed and sat down. He had to make sure he had something to keep Naruto off his ass. Otherwise, he was dead instantly. He looked to Catwoman again, and thought to talk. Hell, it would help calm his nerves. Hey, sorry we froze you, but we're just trying to get a friend back. Don't take it personally, and I want you to know as soon as everything is fine, and we have this friend of ours, you are free to steal once more. With Naruto and the Titans. Robin was calculating his chances on taking Naruto down. Not good. He would seek out Naruto Naruto in his civvies because that was the Naruto he actually knew on a friendly level and get more training to take the costumed man in front of him down. Naruto felt the glaring eyes upon him and turned. Yo, Chuckles, as much as I enjoy the fact you want to beat me someday, I think you should focus on the task at hand, beating the ice villains. Robin narrowed his eyes and looked forward. I'm multitasking. I'm thinking I know a good place for them to try and set up shop. Cyborg came in on that. Wait, you figured it out? Come on then, spill the beans Robin. We need to hurry this up or my circuits will freeze up. Robin activated the communicator and pulled up a map. If I'm right, a good place to start looking would be near Star Labs. Has all the gear to pull a city-wide anything in a matter of minutes. Naruto knew that place in and out. It had the perfect top point and security of the city in its wake. He bet they were there. He started towards it when a new bigger monster appeared in the street. 
it looked like a big fucking diamond with how dense it was. Well, this one is pretty big and tall. It smashed a fist down on Naruto, hard and everyone who had jumped back looked to see the damage done. And paled. Naruto was all right, and the fist and arm that almost hit him was dust. Naruto put a hand up. Time for a little show of power. Want to fuck with me? Fine, but better know you are fucking with the devil, because I will burn you to nothing. The ice creature suddenly lurched at him, and then a bubble formed around from what everyone saw, and it burst the creature into nothing but legs, which Naruto stared at, and it suddenly burst into black flames until it all was gone, and then the black flames vanished. Naruto turned to them. Heavenly pull, heavenly push, and Amaterasu. Learn them well, because you piss me off they come out on you instead. He turned back and did a few hand seals before slamming his palms into the ground and suddenly many creatures flew off into the city, a two-headed dog, a boar, bull, a weird pelican with a drill beak, and more. They will find out if Star Labs is where it's at, or wherever they may be. With that he gestured Robin forward. Robin looked to the team and they were scared shitless. So was he. Naruto has so much power behind him and yet he was still only a thief and wasn't trying to kill anyone. He had to respect Naruto just a bit about that, having so much power and not using it for anything truly evil. He stood up and nodded. Fine, let's rest whilst you search. Titans, take a break. Batgirl, BB, KF, Superboy, Kaljur and Cyborg just nodded in silence, wondering what they were walking with as Naruto just stood there, tails flaring behind him, growling in anger. It was going to be hell on earth in a few minutes. With Raven, Static, Starfire, Wonder Girl, Azeroth, Metrian, Xenthos, Raven had energy wrap around an ice monster and threw it into three more before breaking them on a wall. There's no end to them. Wonder Girl punched two into each other and then kicked a third up into the air before flying into the air and slamming it down and against five more. I wonder how the rest are doing, seeing as this is happening to us. Static melted two more around the block before lifting his glasses. They're fine, I got faith in Rob. Didn't think he'd call in Wonder Girl. Yo, Star, you saved the last one? Starfire unfroze the last frozen guy on the street and let him go to safety. She turned. Yes, I have unfrozen the last on the street. Friend Static, what do we do now? Starfire blasted five of the monsters as she got back to the group. Static took the last one with a zap and melt before they all got close. Robin and the rest are probably on their way to where the villains are held up. I say we go and find them first. Wonder Girl nodded. I agree. Robin told me you'd need help, but I didn't think it was this bad. How many more need to be saved? Raven sensed around a bit. A fair few. He said they weren't in danger of their lives, but I doubt things would go so smoothly. There are monsters all over the place. Static scoffed. Well, we gotta do something. What's the plan then? Anyone got a clue where they may be? Raven shrugged. Sorry, my sensing abilities are being blocked. They must have dealt with psychics before. Either that or I am out of their range. Wonder Girl crossed her arms. I say we go in search of them anyway. Raven, you know the general direction Robin was going? Raven nodded. We were heading towards the center of town. I say we'll take the outskirts then if you are suggesting them. Wonder Girl nodded, smiling. All right then. Titans, move out. They all flew up and started their aerial search, hoping to find some kind of clue to finding the ice villains, and found a big and weird bird flying around. Raven blinked a few times before suggesting what it was. Kitsunex possibly. Same energy as him. Beasts he commands maybe. They just flew off, hoping not to disturb it. It looked powerful, and Raven felt it was too. Hinata was keeping a lookout, easily wanting to make sure everything was okay. She wanted to go help the people on ice, but after an hour of this starting she noticed others doing it, so she would keep an eye out for Naruto. She was doing another check in the air, thinking she wouldn't see him there. He was more of a let it out on whatever he finds near him kind of pissed off but she found a chakra source up there and seen it was a large bird, and gasped, realizing what bird it was. It was the bird of pain. She turned to everyone. He's found us. Seems he is using the Rinnegan he took from Madara. Looks like he's done warming up on the ice monsters. 
Kakashi turned to everyone. That means we'll need a distraction to help weaken him. You ice villains think he's not up to your powers? Combine your powers and face him, and find out for yourself. Frost blinked a bit, and thinking of how she has had many of her beautiful statues of ice broken, even the concentrated ones, she only had one option. Go into battle herself, so who was she to refuse freezing the one to fight against her? I say it's a great plan. Time to make this asshole pay. Kakashi turned to Killer Frost. If you actually manage to defeat him, make sure he is still alive. Otherwise you won't be. Freeze nodded. He helped me survive, so I must say I will allow him to live through our encounter. But know this, if we have to, we'll put him under a cold spell. Freeze and his lame cold jokes, always a test of patience. Icicle SR. Grinned. I got an idea. We all combine our powers to create a golem of immense structure, one that cannot be destroyed or melted. We will have to generate a cold array of great magnitude, but with all five of us, it will be like making an ice cream cake. Jior was grinning ear to ear. That should be no problem with all of us here. Me and Frosty will bring up the thing's look, and then we all power it up. Nothing will stand against it. Frost grinned evilly and popped her knuckles, getting ready. All right, let's get this stiff glass of ice ready for beating this oh-so-powerful guy. We shall not let him down by letting even one weakness be exposed. With that, the five villains started to create the giant ice golem and Eno paled. We're doomed. He'll just wipe that thing out and use its broken pieces to skewer us into meat. We're dead, dead, dead. Oh how I wish I could beg for forgiveness now, but like hell he will listen to me. Hell, he practically made me incapable of feeling pleasure ever again. Kakashi waved her off. Calm yourself, this is a general plan. They will slow him down so we can think at the very least. Besides, it isn't like he'll murder us right off. He used to be the big man, able to get answered from anyone in interrogation. He knows how to torture. You think he did bad back in Kanoha? The only ones who got it worse were Sasuke and Sakura. He can get much worse. So we have to hit him, and hit him hard, otherwise it's a repeat. Hinata had a plan of action ready. She knew everything Naruto could do, and then some. She knew how he can do what and when, and would be able to predict it and that would work in her plan. She had been thinking of ways to talk to Naruto before turning Catwoman over to him, and had only one perfect way of doing so. She walked up to Neji. Hope you don't get too beaten up. Have fun fighting him. Kakashi turned to her as he seen her go back into the building. He figured she needed a bathroom break or something. Then the ground started to shake and the group looked to see the golem done and starting to walk. It was huge. Kakashi's sweat dropped. Well, hopefully Naruto takes it easy on them. They won't last five minutes with that thing. Shall we? Lee nodded and grabbed the containment unit holding Catwoman and dragged it back into the labs. They would release her when Naruto arrived. Unknown to them, Hinata had a different plan. Kakashi, Lee, Neji, Sasuke, Temuri, Sakura, and Ino all waited on the top of the building for Naruto, knowing that after his warm-up, they were next. They would have to hit him with everything they got the first strike. So, they planned. With the Titans and Naruto. Hey, you think he's a little bit too powerful? That girl has snuck up on Robin, and Robin hummed in thought as he looked to Naruto. Truth be told, he had a file on Kitsunex thanks to Naruto of course that suggested the idea she asked about true. He turned to Superboy. You told me you gained a little more of your Kryptonian powers, right? Well, can you explain a bit? All I know is Kitsunex is very strong. I do not know how strong, but after seeing it tonight, I am ready to rethink strategies in case things go wrong. Superboy nodded. I agree on the planning, but my powers aren't very many right now. As you know I can jump high, run faster than normal humans, multiple visions, super hearing, super strength, and invulnerability. I actually just gained, before arriving, super breath, but it won't do much good against him especially since it's already icy out here. KF smirked. Hey, with the amount of power we got, I doubt anything he can do will be nothing. Apparently he didn't get the memo. Oh right, he was too fast getting here to let Robin finish his sentences. Calder frowned. I would not be so sure. Robin showed us a tape of his power he had. 
Turns out he is able to control the wind and lightning generates off him if he wishes it. Cyborg sighed heavily. Yo, I appreciate the planning, but one thing I don't understand. He is cool-headed normally. Back in the Hive Academy I was infiltrating, he was a decent guy to hang with, and not nuts. He only gets pissed when something happens to him personally or his friends. Anyone tries that shit, then he will grow a pair and give them nothing but trouble. BB huffed. Come on, this can't be the same guy you knew back then. He's ripping these ice things apart, and what he did to Robin and Star, I wouldn't be surprised he is as strong as Superman. Not to mention he has a demon inside him. You have no idea. Raven, Static, Starfire, and Wonder Girl flew in, and apparently right on time for Naruto to start moving to them. Found them. On top of Star Labs, like the kid said, I recalled my beasts, so now would be a good chance to go in and destroy those guys. No doubt they saw it and are preparing for my arrival. Get up. Oh, and Raven, you sensed it. Allow me to tell you which one. Kyuubai no Kitsune. The nine-tailed demon fox. Read it up later, you'll be surprised. Move out. Robin stood and looked to the rest of the team. You guys find anything? Wonder Girl shook her head. We rescued everyone, but didn't find them, but when we started looking for the outskirts, we saw something big. Ice golem, big and dense. Static grabbed a ball of some kind and static electricity generated off it before it stopped and static sighed. Sorry, was running low. That should hold me for a bit. Yeah, it looks like the entire group of ice characters are moving in on you. Naruto looked up as a shadow was descending on them. Don't bother. It's here. Chuckles, got a plan for this? Robin was wide-eyed at the size. He turned serious and ready in a second. Yeah, it's called winging it. Titans, go, Cyborg, Raven, Starfire and Beast Boy knew the drill. Dodge and attack whatever is vulnerable until Robin saw a way to beat it. Sadly, no one else did. Frost laughed as she was on the head of the monstrosity. Well, this is new. We only heard about five heroes in this town. Who knew the whole gang would be back together? Oh well, means more revenge for us. Right, SR? Icicle SR. Laughed as he was on the right shoulder. So right you are. Too bad the arrows aren't here. Oh well, guess we'll crush them soon enough. The golem's foot rose and dropped towards Naruto. Naruto growled. Bigger and badder, huh? Too bad, that won't help you at all. Here's what I can do the second you try anything against me. The foot, then, crushed Naruto under it. Everyone stopped as they seen him crushed under the foot, and Freeze laughed harshly. The cold feet of our power will crush you all, for it is time for forever winter. Be afraid, for this is just the start of the icy calling of your doom. Send these heroes to the cooler. I knew those ninja were just playing with our minds. Apparently they were. The foot of the golem was suddenly blown to bits, Naruto intact as he had both his swords in his hands. Naruto rose into the air as he seen the foot return to normal. Allow me to introduce myself. Kitsunex, the nine-tailed doom-bringer, the demon of the leaves, the one X that was forced upon me. You shall feel the wrath of my power. Naruto rushed in, a powerful wind covering his arms and blades as he thrust one into the chest of the golem. Drilling blade, he punctured a huge hole within the golem and was inside as it regenerated and froze him at its heart. Icicle Jr. shivered, and not from the cold. Guys, I think this is a bad place to be. Robin turned to Kaljur. Let's go, just attack, find a weakness, we'll handle the plan for it when we know more. Go go go! Robin threw ten explosive pellets at the foot and jumped out of the way as it came to kick him back. Superboy roared as he jumped up and slammed his fists into the thing's knee, making a dent, but the thing regenerated quick and froze his arms and legs. He ripped his arms out of it and started just trying to smash into it. Starfire fired starbolts into its hips, but flew up and around as the arm of it tried to smash her down. She grunted as the wind of the thing passing made her spiral off a bit before regaining herself. Raven aimed her powers, thinking of augmenting Superboy's punches by drilling into the cracks he made with her powers, although it only regenerated colder than ever. Beast Boy turned into a T-Rex and tried biting into it, but only got stuck, turning back and finding himself stuck like a tongue to a cold pole. Hey, hi's, I can't know, I'm stuck. Calger climbed up the kicking leg, 
activating his handles and generating a heating wave through his body. He splashed hot water on the leg and Beast Boy's teeth, which melted it for a second, and Beast Boy ripped from it before jumping off and turning into a hummingbird and flying off. Calger slammed the handle into the leg and focused his bioelectrical current into it, blasting the knee off and him falling. Wonder Girl caught him and threw him up to the chest area. She flew under the thing and grabbed the broken leg as the thing regenerated a new one and roared, slamming the broken ice leg and kicking the monster down, breaking the new leg as well. The golem caught itself on the buildings and got back up ready, and Static was coming up, generating the last of his strength as he charged a ball of electricity in his hands. Here comes the boom, boys. Let's see if I can't shut the power of your ice machine down. He rushed in and slammed the blasting ball of electricity into the chest, trying to free Naruto, and it blasted a hole into the thing, but not deep enough to get Naruto out. The ice golem slammed its hands on the ground and Robin looked shocked to see the entire place spiking with icicles. Titans, up up up! Starfire gasped seeing Robin without a way out and flew down, grabbing him and flying up at top speed. Kaljur using the last of his water to jettison his way into the air before the water turned to ice. Cyborg, who had been blasting the thing with his cannon, was lifted up thanks to Beast Boy grabbing him in pterodactyle form. Kid Flash was running around the thing to find any way up, but found nothing, and then the icicles hit, and he rushed up a building and jumped into the air. Wonder Girl caught him and flew him around. Everyone landed after the fissures were gone, and Static huffed out of juice. I only brought one along for this fight. Damn, I should have brought three. Batgirl was currently up the thing though, taking the sneaky route. She jumped onto the shoulders and seen Captain Cold. She rushed in and kicked his legs from under him and took his gun, throwing it away and rushing in for Icicle Jr. Bad mistake it seemed, because he turned on her, grinning, and formed his arm into a spiked ice club and swung at her. Suddenly the golem was shaking, making Icicle Jr. stop his assault, and everyone look around. Suddenly the chest burst open and Naruto was roaring with power, the tails thrashing around and crushing the regenerating chest into nothing as his power grew. Naruto flew up, through the thing's head and grabbed Frost by the throat. You think I can be held by this sack of cold shit? I went through worse against Itachi fucking Uchiha and his partner Kasame Hashigaki. Take this you bitch. Naruto slammed her into her golem and slammed a knee into her gut a racing gun grounding into her shoulder, disabling her as he stomped on her stomach harder, making her puke her lunch before he picked her up and slammed her head against his, making her dizzy. He put her face near his and opened the eye's lid, making his sharing an eye visible to her. Suddenly her world turned red, a black moon above her, and around her was raging fires. She grunted as a flare-up was in front of her. She huffed. What is this? Where am I? Who are you? You can't scare me, I face the Justice League. Naruto appeared in front of her. Oh, the Justice League? Please, they can't fathom the hell I can conjure with a thought. This is my world, the world I create. I am saving the bulk of this power for those idiots you allied with, those guys who are probably with Catwoman. Tell me, what did you hear about me from them? Frost cursed, sweating profusely from the raging fires around her. They said all kinds of bullshit, how you are so tough, destroyed a village, nearly killed them, how they will die today, yada yada, no way you'll fry me, take this. She shot her arms out, hoping to freeze him and the fire, but she couldn't conjure anything from her hands, she looked shocked. No way, why can't I freeze you, this can't be. Naruto huffed. I told you, this is my world, I control everything here, matter, life, death, time, Everything you see, touch, hear, smell, and taste. And I say no fucking ice in my world. You will burn up and die from heat, be revived, and scorched to death again, and repeat the cycle over and over, for 24 hours. Good luck, bitch. She was suddenly blasted in fire, screaming as she was turning black from scorched skin and burnt clothing on her, slowly turning into coal for the fire for an hour straight and then dying from it. She was suddenly turned back, revived and full of life, and it started again. It went on for a full 24 hours in that world, as Naruto performed Tsukiyomi, and it was only a second in the real world. She suddenly screamed and blacked out before Naruto got up, throwing her over the side and rose a hand up. You ice fuckers should get away now. 
he started to generate a huge racing in above him, what looked to be about 50 feet diameter all around. The ice villains jumped, Batgirl taking Captain Cold to the nearest building, and everyone got out of the way. Naruto roared as he rose into the air and then turned the Racingen down to the ground and dropped fast. Gigantic Racingen. The golem was thus destroyed, a huge ice mist covering the place before dissipating and everyone looked around, gathering in the crater Naruto made, him standing in the middle. Naruto ran up and grabbed Freeze. Freeze was hyperventilating, scared shitless. Naruto growled. What did you do to Catwoman? Or should I do the same thing to you next? Freeze gulped, shaking his head. We put her in a cryogenic chamber, safe and alive. Star Labs, we put her there. Your friends are there too. Please, I beg you, I won't ever go against your word again. Naruto glared at Freeze and judged him, before throwing him to the ground and walking to Star Labs. Good choice, Freeze. You kids can warm things up from here. I got a bone to pick with my old friends. Robin turned to everyone, seeing the ice villains that weren't hit turn themselves into them. He hummed in thought. Cyborg came up to him. Yo, Rob, what's up man? Gonna follow him? Robin looked down. He's too strong for us. Seems like he hasn't lost any strength ever since he started, but we're all tired and weak. Static is out of juice. Kaljur is out of water. What are we supposed to do? Starfire came up to him smiling as she put a hand on his shoulder. We can handle this cleanup. You go and make sure he does not kill anyone. Superboy came up too. I'll go with you. Can't let you try all that alone. Come on, let's at least grab the cat and be done with this. Robin looked to the rest of the team. He smiled. Everyone stay here. Cyborg, Superboy, you're with me. Batgirl, get Freeze ready for transport. Not doubt the big bat will be down here to collect when you tell him you're through here. With that, Robin, Cyborg and Superboy ran off in chase of Naruto. That girl was going to see about Freeze, when Static came up behind her, looking serious. Got a minute? She turned and smiled a little. Sure. What you need. He gestured away for privacy and she nodded, following him a bit. Static turned to her when she and him got out of the way. Listen. Robin is secretive. That is generally how shit goes with the Gotham Wings, secrets, stealth, and being unseen. But there's something you should know here. Remember when he left? How he went to be on his own? Batgirl frowned, remembering the day well. Dick had punched Bruce in the face and left the cave after they had talked it out about their secrets. It was their mo to keep secrets. He was angry that he didn't know hers. Though, she was understanding maybe she made a mistake. She sighed, shifting about. Yeah, he was mad that I kept my secrets from him. He never told me his, so I didn't think it would matter. Static nodded, but looked serious. Well, how he tells it, you knew his because Batman told you his own. You knew who Batman was, thus you figured who Robin was. You on the other hand had no ties with Batman personally. How was he supposed to figure out that part as easily as you did? Batgirl hummed in thought before sighing sadly. You got a point. My father doesn't even know about my cowl. Static smiled a bit to her. Listen, he ain't mad that you kept it a secret. He was mad at the big guy, keeping you back and almost killing you with never letting you get experience. He left because the big guy was too brutal and too dark. Robin left to be on his own because he hated Batman's attitude. Can T deny Batman's skills, but you can say he takes it out the wrong way. He understands you want to help, but he doesn't understand why Batman is so dark about it. Batgirl looked to Static in confusion. How do you know this? Did you see him when he left because he was angry? Static sighed at that. No. When he left, he was going through Dakota, and we met up. He told me what happened when I was helping him find a good direction for him to take to be his own man. He still cares for you, but he's not very good on words for what he is thinking. Static smiled as she looked down. He was thinking of just stop being a hero altogether if Batman kept the ideas on him, but he wants to help people and keep fighting for the good of mankind the way he thinks it should be done. So he is here with the Titans now, so I guess he still thinks that way. Batgirl smiled sadly. I see guess I never really understood what he was going through because I was too busy thinking I was doing well under Batman. I hope he keeps doing well on his own. 
With that, the two started getting the villains ready for the police. Naruto flew up the star's building and landed on the edge as he glared in front of him, and in front of him was an ambush. Or was it? Sasuke had two Chidoris aimed for his head, Sakura a glowing fist ready to uppercut his balls, and Kakashi coming from up high with a Reikiri of his own, and Lee had teleported behind him using five of the eight gates and Ino was ready to mind rape him. He saw though she wouldn't, knowing full well what she would get if she tried. He turned left and walked up a step, and everyone slammed into each other instead, blasting them all around as he turned back. He walked up a step and growled. That the best you got, you fucking losers? Please, I seen better from Madara. Now. Where. Is. She. Sasuke got up, sharing and flaring. You don't give the demands here. I may be forced to keep you alive, but that doesn't mean I can't bring you down, Amaterasu. Naruto was hit by black flames, and Sasuke grinned wildly. Naruto, however, was not affected. The Kyuubai cloak absorbed the flame's power and Naruto popped his neck by simply turning it to the side. Thanks for the therapeutic heat treatment. I was feeling stiff, probably after fighting all this ice. I hate ice. Oh well. Time for you to feel the burn. Naruto's eye lens uncovered again, and suddenly Sasuke's eye was burst into black flames, and he fell to the ground screaming. Sakura roared at him. Don't hurt Sasuke-kun. He's better than you in every way you should bow to him and beg for forgiveness. Naruto grabbed her throat and forced his head into hers before staring into her eyes. Bitch, let me show you whom should be begging whom for forgiveness. And with that, she gasped, looking into his sharing an eye. Bad idea. Sakura was suddenly in a red world with a black moon. Sakura huffed. Coward, using Jinjutsu against me. You can never truly beat me. You always lost when we fought. This won't do anything to me. Naruto chuckled as he shone up in front of her, and suddenly she was put up on a cross. You wanna know why you punched me and I would be on the ground? Because I didn't wanna fight you. I loved you. I can't fathom why I even felt that way about a banshee whore who would do anything for the dick of a traitorous, homosexual, brother obsessed, agile. Naruto slammed a fist into her chest, making her fly back a hundred yards before she was on yet another cross. He walked up to her, Sakura grunted, looking at him with anger. You are just weak, and you could never pleasure me like Sasuke does. Naruto slammed yet another raging fist into her chest, making her fly back a thousand yards before she stopped and was surrounded by Naruto's. He scoffed. You think that, huh? Let me tell you something, queen of all there is to know. You never gave me a chance to even get a hard on. Every time I had morning wood, you would smash me through my bed, through the floor, and down two stories in my apartment, every damn morning. Ever hear of morning wood before? It's a natural male occurrence when we need to piss in the morning. He kicked her in the stomach, the others slamming a fist to the chest, a knee to the face, a jab to the groin, just punishing her before stepping back. He growled louder. I would be walking down the hall, say hey beautiful, and you would do what? Kick me down the hallway and through the wall for suggesting we fuck. How in the world does saying beautiful mean let's f? She was suddenly crushed under ten massive racing guns before lifted and thrown into the air. Naruto was above her. For every punch, every ounce of strength you used against me for the time you were with me, every single touch that suggested you want to kill me, I will deal to you tenfold before I stop using this genjutsu, and you will feel this for years to come. Naruto fired off a tailed beast bomb, killing Sakura in a burst of blood, gore, and flesh. Soon though, she reanimated and gasped back to life, being put on a cross again. She looked scared now. Around her, memories, his memories of her, the memories of what he did to Konoha, she was watching it all unfold. Naruto chuckled darkly. Suck it up, bitch. It's only been ten minutes, and we are gonna be here for a good ten days. Say your prayers and remember the F torture I give you today, Die a million times and feel my wrath. Feel free to be relieved that Sasuke will get his share. Five days passed within the Tsukiyomi Naruto created. Sakura was pale, glazed eyes, as Naruto ripped her heart from her chest, crushing it with a racing gun before reviving and healing her completely, making her gasp back to life. Sakura finally remembered everything. It seemed she suppressed all her emotions for Naruto and memories, and it was because Sasuke hypnotized her, mainly, 
But she was also defensive with her emotions because she didn't want to be hurt. After all the hurt Sasuke gave her early on. She gasped, rasping as Naruto twisted a fiery Amaterasu sword into her stomach, twisting and turning it around inside her as he went deeper with it. Try not to pass out, bitch. We're only halfway through this, we got a long way to go. Suddenly he slashed the sword up and cut her in half, and then shoved a Chidori into her head slowly but harshly before she died. He once more revived her, and she gasped harder, rasping loudly. No. More. Please. I can't. I'm. Sorry. No more. I beg. You. Naruto stopped. Then growled loudly. You think I want your apology? You think begging me will make this stop? Forget that shit. I still have five days of torturing your ass before I am done paying you back every single strike you gave me. Then I can start giving it ten more times before I finally kill you. Sakura kept begging, kept apologizing, but it fell on deaf ears as Naruto continued torturing her mind and body and spirit. She experienced so much pain and death that she felt nothing would ever save her from this torment, even if he ended the genjutsu. And just as the last ten seconds were about to end the genjutsu, Naruto pulled her down from the cross and put her on her knees. He rose his sword, raging with all five elements and a racing in drill around it. She looked up, as tough as it was to do so in her condition, and watched as it came down and felt everything. Her body convulsing with shocks, killing her and shutting her heart down. Fire burning her form the inside out, killing her with the disintegration of her body, water drowning her horribly and blowing her lungs and stomach up in steam, wind slicing her body into many pieces all over the place, and lastly the earth grinding her body to dust. Feeling everything as the racing and drill turned what ashes her body was into atoms and flying into the air, feeling everything as it killed her totally. And then, the genjutsu ended. Sakura fell lifeless to the ground, but still alive, as Naruto caught Lee's attack and broke his arm, throwing him over his shoulder and into the floor and stomping on his stomach, then ground a racing gun into the side of his face before jumping up. He jumped for two reasons. One was Neji coming up to render his chakra useless for a few seconds, and the second to pull off his tailed beast bomb, blowing the side of the roof off and making Lee fly into Kakashi, who caught him, and Neji through the building, painfully trying to get back up. Naruto looked to what was left, turning off the Amaterasu on Sasuke, and seeing his mission a success on that part, Sasuke now no longer had a sharing an eye in that socket. He only had a single eye now, and he was gasping, horrified. Naruto saw Ino, scared shitless, and Temuri was trying to figure what to do next, whilst Kakashi was, gone. Sorry, but not this time, you fucking asshole. You never taught me anything useful, but I learned from you nonetheless. Kakashi rammed a reikiri into Naruto's stomach from behind. Sorry, Naruto. But I had to. You needed to be stopped, and we need you alive. Forgive me. Not a effing chance. Oh, and one thing here. Boom. Kakashi was suddenly blasted into the air at high force as the Naruto he struck just exploded with massive force. He was then caught by the real Naruto and thrown into the floor of the roof and a Chidori rammed into his lung from behind. I got a good life now, but you wanna fuck with me? Fine, but just remember, I killed Madara, you have no chance. Naruto threw Kakashi to Temuri and started stepping forward. That was when Robin and Superboy jumped in front of him, Cyborg flanking his back. Robin frowned. I thought you told me you wouldn't kill them. You told me you were not evil. Well, what do you call this? Naruto growled, punching Robin in the face and throwing Superboy to the ground. He stomped on Superboy's chest and put a kunai to Robin's throat. You two sit your five dollar asses down before I make change. They will live, I give you my word but like hell they won't get a few strikes for their bullshit. They were the ones to sick the damn ice guys on us, so stay right there, or I will raise this building to the ground so fast you will blink and miss it. He stood back up and stepped forward to Temuri and Ino, and then Neji came back up and through the floor, using his rotation to blast Naruto off. Naruto used his hand to cut the rotation, waiting for Neji to stop. Neji looked horrified as Naruto caught him with his nine tails and then stabbed his sword into Neji's side and cutting outward, giving a gash into Neji before throwing him through the floor again. He stepped further up to the last remaining fighters. 
and grabbed them both by the collars, they were so scared they couldn't move. Naruto ground a racing gun into the sides of their faces, making their faces collide together in the middle, and then fall unconscious, Naruto stepping on them as he walked forward. He had only one more threat left, and would see her. Naruto went inside and saw Hinata with Catwoman. Hinata pressed her hand to the glass. Hold it, Naruto-kun, or I will shatter her. Naruto stopped. He assessed the situation. She had her back turned to him, meaning no Tsukiyomi treatment. She could sense chakra flare-ups, so any jutsu was out of the question, and he was far enough away for her to notice any move against her, and she knew him very well, and had his kunai placed beside him on the ground before he arrived. Hinata sighed sadly. I only wish to talk. Hear me out, and you can have her. I will not fight you. I will not kill her without reason. All I want is for you to listen. Will you allow me this? Naruto hummed in thought. Hinata was always nice to him. Hinata never fooled around. She even hated Sakura enough to nearly paralyze Sakura for life after all the bullshit Sakura did to him. All in all, Hinata deserved no torture and was only following orders, so he couldn't hold it against her. He nodded, knowing she would see him do so. Hinata sighed heavily. I know what they all did to you. I know how I was before. I was weak, I had no backbone. I couldn't save you when you needed me, and for that I know I should rot in the deepest parts of hell. I accept my fate to go there when I die. But I cannot let anyone harm you anymore. I knew you would defeat them all without taking a single hit, so I stayed put right here. Besides, they needed to be tortured like they had been by you just now. Naruto nodded again. He had to admit, she had grown a big pair able to admit this, able to talk to him and still concentrate on him to keep him at bay if need be. She was smart, beautiful, and now she was brave and calculating to boot. Too bad what she didn't do in the past was the reason he never wanted to be with her at all, not even now. Hinata turned her head, allowing her eyes and look to be seen by him, but keeping to having no eye-to-eye -eye contact. She smiled sadly. I wish you happiness in this world, Naruto, but I will not disappear. I will find a way to be with you somehow, to make amends. No matter what I need to do, I love you and always will. This is where I cut my ties with Kanoha and the rest you faced here, goodbye. With that, she took her hand away and walked off and vanished in the darkness. Naruto looked the way she went for a minute before turning to Catwoman. See you when you come for me again then, Hinata. He went and started unfreezing Catwoman. She came out of the pod and started to wake up in Naruto's arms and groaned. What happened? Naruto stood her up and reverted to his normal self. Freeze kidnapped you and froze you and the city. The Titans and me saved the city and you. Now go on. Get going before someone tried to arrest you. Not so fast. Robin dropped in and brought out cuffs. Sorry, you're going back to Gotham, Catwoman. Catwoman smiled a bit. Sorry, but I will go there my own way. Sorry, boy wonder. She blew him a small kiss before kissing Naruto, although her lips kissed a mask, it was felt through by Naruto. He rubbed his mask a little as Catwoman ran out the window and whipped herself around the next building and vanished. He turned to Robin. Sorry, ain't getting me either, sorry, see ya though. Naruto then vanished in a yellow light and Robin growled. Robin went back up and looked to Cyborg as Superboy tied up the Kanoha ninja. Did you record him? Cyborg nodded, tapping his head. All in here. What's the plan for him now? Robin started walking past. Easy. We get ready. I will have to find that one guy again to train me more. Cyborg nodded, and all three left, Superboy carrying the Kanoha ninja. After they were taken by the police, though, the Kanoha ninja broke free and vanished back into hiding once more. So alright folks that's all for today. Stay tuned for part 5. Do subscribe, like and share for more such videos. Also check out the story and author goddess part in the Kitsune on fanfiction.net. Press the bell icon to be notified first on release. See you in the next video till then goodbye.